What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Wings Redemption, and we're back with number 50, 50, 50, 50, painkiller already. And we're coming from a long road. It's been one year now. It's a little over a year. We came from 600 viewers on average to the number one podcast on Podbean. Now we average five to 7,000 viewers on the live stream. <laughs> there it is, man. I can't believe we're number one on Podbean. Yeah. They, okay. By the way, you had a little bit of a robot thing going on there. Kyle, I like it, though. It's kind of like he was auto-tuned. <laughs> yeah, I did that on purpose. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, number one on Podbean. I can't believe that. It's huge. Why do you think our podcast does so well? Charisma. We we have such a good karma. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we work well together. I um, I think that's true. I, I I think there's part of it. You know, we just kind of vibe off each other, and it goes well. Part of it, I think, is work. I think you know, we we get here, and you know, it's a funny time to mention that because we've had kind of a a few missed shows lately. But uh, for the most part, every week we're up, we're doing it, and uh, and you know we're at we're at it. It's kind of reliable, and that that counts for a lot. Well, look, at, I'm looking at it this way: we've missed two shows in in a year. Um, three, I think. Three, three. It's been yeah. 53 weeks, and we've done 50 of them. Yeah, so that's uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's not bad, right there. That's like a, that's like an 800 batting average. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than that. It has to be. It's, it's a little better than that. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, I'm I'm kind of proud of the podcast. I really like it. So it's uh, it's turning into something cool. So I guess since there's no guest, we won't start off with the uh, the typical topic. But um, we can talk about the the Call of Duty patch that came out. Have you guys read about it? Have you seen the details? I want to answer the okay. question. Oh, you want to answer the question about yeah. switching bodies? Yeah. Well, I'm just going to say it this way. I would so make out with myself because I'm the bomb kissing. <laughs> what, what, what makes yeah, you think you're the bomb kissing? There's something well, so much gayer than that about that. <laughs> that just blowing yourself, man. Like, that's fucked up. Well, I, I, don't, know, I don't know how to suck no dick, but I can kiss like a motherfucker. I'd, I'd, much, I'd be much happier blowing myself than, like, the make it out with myself. That's just, that's just dirty. No oh, man, so, dude. So I thought I was a decent kisser until I met this one girl at a party. I, it, I was in college. It was actually just before I, I met my wife, and uh, I was blown away by her kissing ability. It 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 stepped up my game entirely. I am a, I'm a better man for her experience. I'm not trying to I'm not trying to tug my own chain, but this week alone, I've made a girl nut off of kissing her. Just saying it. Just saying it. Yeah, dude. I, I don't think I could do that. <laughs> that's uh, that's uh, wow. You are the bomb. I mean, I, I work. I work on my woman pleasing abilities. Please, for the love of God, make it stop! <laughs> <laughs> ding ding, motherfucker! New topic. God damn. The last thing. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No offense to anyone. We're not talking about this. Move a fucking long. Let's talk about Call of Duty patches. So how do you make her nut by kissing her? God, dude. <laughs> no. Hell no. Hell no. 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 I don't even... I'm getting mental images. I'm seeing people wiggling around in chairs. No. Stop this. You Stop you this. You about anal fissures, didn't you? <laughs> so, so just to be clear, you're not touching her downstairs whatsoever, right? This is just <sighs> lip-to-lip contact? Straight up lip-to-lip. I'm speechless. I didn't know you could do that. Yeah. You know what else I learned? That there's a nerve on the bottom of a woman's foot that actually will make her orgasm. I learned that from a Call of Duty uh, video I saw on YouTube. <laughs> Isn't that where... Did you mention it? No, I, you... I mentioned it on Twitter because I was looking through... Um... That's where it was, yes. Yeah, on Twitter you said that there was like a nerve on the, woman's of a, on the bottom of a woman's foot that, that <laughs> is an erogenous zone. Yeah, and... Um, I haven't got around to the point, but I'm working on it right now to get up to that point where I can rub her feet until she's uh, squirming around. That's a talent I should pick up. I mean, that's because a woman will almost willingly give you her feet to rub. And if you can get her on the verge of an orgasm, you can get further. I remember when I was 15, I had this big plan. I had read in penthouse letters that... um, uh, shampooing a woman's hair was this like incredibly you know sexy experience and i was like that's my plan that's it i have to get a woman in the shower i have to wash her hair and then when i do she'll be putty in my hands and, i gotta uh, say 
if you've already got her in the shower, you probably don't need to like be pulling any kung fu moves on her. I was young, <laughs> right? I... <laughs> okay, but... okay, okay. <laughs> But um, but yeah, that was my big thing. It was like I'm gonna wash her hair, and then she'll be you know DTF. And uh, um, I, I guess you're maybe I, maybe you're right. I, maybe I need to think this through. But uh, I'm not sure that the sh- the washing of the hair is actually what made it happen. So what are you gonna do? Yeah, it, I was young. It was actually not so much a shower as it was an Egyptian aqueduct. But um, the concept is the same. Just a just a sandy field. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Please, why can't we talk about the pets? <laughs> you know, Kyle is the resident playboy, and he he is I know. shy about anything sexual. No, anything man, sexual just, or related to anal fissures. Shy, Kyle just doesn't want to go down there that road. It's just, it's just like, like one thing. Like, like if I were talking to a girl about it, it'd be fine. But it's just something about just just me and two other dudes and five thousand dudes listening. As we talk about Wings making out with a girl and apparently making her orgasm through making out with her. I'm sorry. That's just not getting it for me. I, I mean, it's, it's, it's great, man. Like, like, I wish I could say that. I've never done that. It's not I that know. gay. There has to be at least three girls in the stream. That, it's yeah. more like just a big gangbang. Is Kenzie Baby still here? I haven't seen her in a while. <laughs> it's like one of those gangbangs you see where, like, there's guys literally lined up, like, jerking it. <laughs> like, and they're, like, fully clothed except for their pants. Like, they're wearing <laughs> shoes with socks, hats, shirts, usually sunglasses, and they're all just working it. Like, like they're just waiting on... There's, and and there's so, the line is so big that there's actually a, an attendant there, like, at the theme parks, who, you know, like, pulls the, ch- who pulls the chain out of the way, and, he, and, like, you know, he goes to the he goes to the rules, he's like, all right, all right, you must be this tall, all right, yep, 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 all right, now keep your hands and feet over here, don't do this, don't do that, keep your hands out of the shot, go. <laughs> At what ratio does it change from gangbang to just like a, a circle jerk? You know, exactly. The, the, yeah, that's really to true. One, at two hundred to one, at some point, that girl's not actually with you. I know, right? Like, like and and what if you, what if you like finished before you even got to the girl? Oh no! Like, gosh, <laughs> you what if you're, like, you're working it and like the guy, you're like, God, I wish this line would hurt. This is the longest line I've ever been in my life, and you hear behind you, ah, ah, and you're like, God, and you're like, the guy is like right behind you, going at it. No, no. I mean, I don't if it was me, I would try to get that second one worked up before I got through the line. <laughs> if there's that many guys, your goal is not to last that long. You know, she's trying to roll through. Yeah, you're not trying to put on a clinic or anything. You're just trying to get it done. <laughs> <laughs> right. You're supposed to be on the edge when you start with her, and she's just pretty much finishing guy after guy after guy. Yeah, I'm sure there's like, some guy that gets up there and he's like he's like looking at the other guys because he's like secretly gay. He's like, yeah, watch this. Yeah, you see that? Uh huh. Uh huh. And they're like, sir, sir, you're five minutes. <laughs> Back of the line. Back of the line. <laughs> uh, Fuck. So let me ask you this, Kyle. Have you ever been to a sex shop? Yeah, I've been to a sex shop. I went to my first one didn't this you, week. Didn't you see that last video he put up there? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Oh man, those things are weird. You ever been to one, Woody? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh oh yeah. Ooh. No, yeah. I, I I I know I come off like a virgin on my YouTube channel, but the truth is, um, I have some kids. Let's just say, adopted. Ooh. Nope. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. No, I've uh, uh, I've been to a sex shop. You know how much it costs to buy a Korean baby? I do. Oh, <laughs> I thought you were going to like, I thought we were going to play like the price is right. Like, you know, how much does a jackrabbit cost? Who knows? How much does a jackrabbit cost? <laughs> well, I was, was going to do the I was gonna do price is right cock block on Woody. He's going to say like six ninety nine. I'd be like 700 <laughs> I mean, at some point you got to come up with new things to shoot. I'm just saying. Just saying. I mean, <laughs> we'll, leave it, we'll leave it at that. Oh, man. You could do, like, trick shots, right? Like, you know, circumcise. <laughs> it's like a rubber you're, dildo with the 9 millimeter. A- you ever seen a tiny Korean baby fired from a cannon? <laughs> no. You this can't want be legal, to, Kyle? <laughs> Dude, is that <laughs> African safari idea likely to happen? No, the right, I'm down for it, but Kyle doesn't want to go. He's scared of shooting animals. No, let me ask you this, Wings. Is it the African safari that's interesting you, or is it just shooting the the lion and having it on your wall? Well, I can't afford a lion, son. No, I'm just <laughs> no. I, I know you where you can get a lion for ten grand and mount it in everything. Ten to fifteen. Is the guy going to chop my hands off if I can't come no, up with the money? No, it's in Texas. It's in Texas. 
Really? Is Ted Nugent involved in this? Don't be worried I, about Ted. So no. Dear, dear <laughs> the idea is the hunt, Kyle. The hunt. They, I no, know. All right, here's what they do. Let me let me walk you guys through this for any of you who are like evil, cold hearted motherfuckers. That you go to Missouri, you pick out your animal, all right? Whatever it is, you can pick out a fucking zebra if that's what you want to shoot. They airlift this thing down to this giant ranch in Texas. It's like 60,000 acres. They drop it off, okay? They leave it there for three months so it, you know, it finds some good hiding spots, I guess. Then they send you in like fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger in Commando, and you go get it. And you mm. pay for that. And they, they'll mount it, chop its head off, all that good stuff, so you can stick it there on the wall at your, at your so humble abode. So what if my animal of choice is like a homeless veteran? We can set that up like that. <laughs> Like, like, I'm, I'm serious. But I've, I've seen some movies about this, and it always goes bad for the hunters. Always. <laughs> Nine times out of ten, that homeless veteran was a badass in Nam, and he's just gonna, <laughs> he's making like, like spike pits. He's using like pine sap to make some kind of jet fuel to power his rocket ship. He's doing crazy stuff out there in the woods. You don't want to fuck with those guys. He, he turns out to be Chuck Norris in disguise. Like, don't even. Nice. You, if you, but I've always, I always have wanted to. I figured that, you know, we always wanted to have a zombie apocalypse. Me and my cousin were like, man, I just wish it would happen. I just wish it happened. You know, whole world decimated, like one quarter of a percent survives, and we're in it. That'd be you know awesome. What, you know what you should do? I have a plan to get the zombie apocalypse worked out. So do I. Picture this, right? Open up your one, your own like one eight hundred depression line and find people who want to die. And then offer the zombie apocalypse <laughs> service as a um, like as a as a service, right? So so these are people who want to die. You can be, you gather them together in groups of like two or three hundred, and then kill them all. I was thinking more like you kidnap about ten hobos and inject them all with uh, the rabies uh, virus and and let it run its course. Then you set yeah. them free in the neighborhood. I'm, I'm sort of <laughs> wondering how the fuck a, a Vietnam vet that could build spike picks not get a job at McDonald's. That's a good point. You know what I mean? Like. <laughs> There's a movie well, called, I think it's called Surviving the Game with Ice Cube. Mm-hmm. Or is it Ice-T? It's Ice-T. Okay, yeah. I get him. It's so stupid. There's two black rappers. One's Ice Cube, one's Ice-T. I have a hard time. But anyway, <laughs> he turns out to be some kind of like master of disguise out there in the woods. Like, like he's just, he's taking out, he takes out like five or six hundred. Who's making that noise? You know who it is. Wings of Redemption, are you eating? No! That's not like eating. Big old Wings, McDonald's are you eating? Food. That is a glass of sweet tea. Leave me alone. <laughs> that sounded like a jug. That sounded I like you had a whole gallon or something. What was that? Puncher was on to something. Whenever someone's eating on the call, you just go straight to wings. That's it. <laughs> 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 so Dan is here. Dan, the offer hey. to stop by. And What's up, guys? Wish. What's up, Dano? So everyone wants to hear this Dan update. They want to know what you're doing now. So for those of you who yeah. don't know, Dan was on the show, I don't know, four or five episodes back. And uh, and he told us the whole story of this this internet jackass who um, I, I don't know talked to his wife over Facebook. They ended up getting uh, you know divorced because of this like emotional affair thing. And now he's just rolling in booty. So so what's uh-huh. new, Dan? Rolling in booty, you think you, I think you give me way too much, uh, too many props, man. It's Dude, I wouldn't say you're rolling. So, okay. Go yeah. Ahead. Maybe um, surrounded by surrounded by booty, possibly. But you know, I'm, first off, I want to apologize for being late. I was, a friend of mine forwarded me a breastfeeding video from YouTube, and I just <laughs> I had to watch it in its completion before I, I joined you guys. You have four daughters. You you've seen this before, right? I I have, but these women were hot as hell. Is, is it bad <laughs> that I'm into like breastfeeding women on YouTube? It depends it's, how into it you thing? are. Like if you watch it. <laughs> If you watch it and you're like, yeah, suck it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't be afraid. Don't, no, don't be afraid. Yeah, go right in there. Fuck yeah. Uh-huh. Then it's creepy. Then I it's wish creepy. I was three months old. Oh my old. God, I'd be like, I know your gums hurt. <laughs> 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 well, see, now it's more about the baby, I think. When you- <laughs> yeah, w- wings went straight for the two month old. That's yeah, w- <laughs> w- like, wings, you're doing it wrong. You're doing it so wrong. <laughs> so what's worse? Is it is it the breastfeeding porn or is it like the babysitting porn? You know, this whole scenario where the babysitter comes in and you know so I hear, I don't know for sure. Yeah, I've heard no. stories about it porn internet. I'm still trying there's, to verify it myself. There's nothing wrong with babysitting porn, let me just throw that out there. 
Yeah. So <laughs> there's nothing wrong with it. It's just speaking from someone with a little bit of experience, huh? I don't know what you're talking about. No, I, I, I just heard that there's nothing wrong You've with it. You've heard, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, Dan, didn't you tell me you had five dates in a week? When was that? Yeah. It was um, – I, I call it my – perfect storm of poontang is uh-huh. i don't know if that's inappropriate or not but um yeah it was it was actually four i verified and went back and looked at it it was actually four dates in a week and it was um it was crazy and you know i wish i had a better story behind it like i i ended up getting two of them together at once and sort of you know maneuvering this kind of threesome thing it wasn't like anything like that uh because i'm a gentleman of course um mm. but <laughs> but it was um literally one on Monday, one on Tuesday, then one on Thursday, and I think one on the on the Friday. But the one that was funny was it was on my corporate because I'm I'm a very much a scheduled kind of guy because I got four daughters. I, I don't have any freaking free time, so I'm I'm a slave to my calendar. So I had if I've got a date, I put it on my corporate email, like my corporate calendar, and it shows up. And every now and again, I I share my screen in a meeting and some of the, in the meetings I'm now with, you know, what do you know this? Like it's now with directors, VP sometimes. And, uh, it was on Thursday I had marked off a couple hours and it was shots with Brandy, Brandy with an I. Mm-hmm. And someone said, you know, less about this whole like system architecture thing. I want to know more about that. What are you, what do you got going on tonight? You know, shots of Brandy. And it was, uh, it's, it's a, I don't know. If, I don't know what your what you know what your listeners you know the whole demographics are. I guess they're all gamers. But um, this woman is um, hot as hell, and she's a web developer. And what do you? We've been to Cisco for how long? It's been. I don't. Yeah, dude. I think I need photographic evidence on this girl because yeah. I've never seen a hot female web developer before. I have never ever in eleven years, and I think I'm going to date myself here. But I've been. You know, post college, about eighteen years or so, and I've never once seen a hot web developer or a developer or anyone in IT for that matter. And <laughs> this one, we, Dude, we showed we now, had a date with her a couple days you, ago, and she showed up in five inch stripper heels. I was like, <laughs> what, you, "Do you, you remember were, when you we were went, my new best friend? <laughs> when we went to the Dominican Republic, you showed me the pictures of that girl you were dating. She was gorgeous. She had huge boobs. She had long yeah. blonde hair, and you yeah. told me she was a stewardess." That was believable, right? Yes. That made perfect sense for right. Southwest right. stewardess. Right. But um, yeah, but the hot web developer. So, so what is your? Did you have any dating secrets for guys? You know, how are you picking up all these girls? Um, dating secrets. So there's a couple things. And look, let me, let me first tell you that I have been. You know, I've been married since I was. I'm gonna take a step back. Uh, I had been dating the same woman and or being married since I was 20 years old. So me being back into the dating world, I would, I felt like I was a fish out of water. And look, I, I wish I could say I wrote the book, but I didn't. I, I relied on material online. And it's there's guys out there that sort of their whole thing, just like what you guys have here with, with, um, with gaming, there's guys out there with material around pussy, basically. And it's it's like, how do you... It's it's the pickup artist community. I guess that's the way you say it, and they, I think it's PUA. And it's really about how do you how do you get game with these did, women, right? Did Jerry from work tell you about this? He did, yeah. And Jerry does. <laughs> I knew it. Jerry is like a model. That guy is like a like he's my man crush. If I if I can even say that, <laughs> the guy is, he doesn't need game. He's got the looks, you know. Um, but he was telling me about how. You know, if if the woman is really good looking, what you actually do is you actually knock him down a couple notches by sort of making little comments here and there about, you know, oh, you know, you know, when you smile, you got these wrinkles around the side of your eyes. I think it's so cute. And they get really self conscious. Like these women, a lot of them, especially the really good looking ones, um, are really self conscious inside. And but they've got this sort of Really? So you make uh, yeah. them feel bad about themselves as a way to not, pick them up? that's so it's such a horrible thing to say, Woody. It's it's, it's, I was, well, it's a horrible thing to do, yet it is the tactic that works for you. It's absolutely the tactic. And and not that I'm going in there necessarily because some of these guys they just 
it's all about pickup. I mean, it's it's like it's it's like a game is really what it is. And there's books written about it. There's one by Neil Strauss. So if anyone wants to learn any of this, not that I'm an expert in it, um, called the game, literally called the game, and it's it's his exploits into the pickup pickup artist community, and it is it's more it's it's more about his kind of journey into it more than like tips and tricks. So, but yeah, what? go ahead. Websites and such. I mean, is there a site you like more? What, what do you got going on? Uh, as far as meeting women, or as far as just sorting how to get the game, you know, to I, to I, deal with them, because it's really t- it's a twofold process. One is you have to have you got to have confidence, you know. And look, I I was divorced and I had zero confidence. I felt like, I mean, my ego was down to zero, and I really felt like shit. I'm not going to be able to get anybody, and it's just. Things. I mean, you saw me in the beginning couple months mm-hmm. when I was living mm-hmm. with you. It was horrible, and uh, you know, it's just about getting confidence, and it's about um, you know, some guys are out there. Like I say, they they try to push buttons here and there because women, the way they react to, to situations, have been ingrained over the course of millions of years of evolution. And you know, you can, you know, we're in the modern society now. It's two thousand. This crap, millions of I years of evolution. I swear to God, it's it's gold. I'm Come telling on you, now. No. it absolutely, um, it works. It absolutely works. Let, let's just get buttons. back to the actual game plans. You know, yeah, like it, well, which of these sites has the loosest women? Which of these sites has the classy women? Let, let, let's let's drop the evolution stuff and talk let about me, uh, the tactics. All right? Do you want just straight up tactics? Huh? <laughs> can I can I say something about this? Yes, sir. The best way to get the women is to be able to look them in the face and lie right to it. To lie right to them? <laughs> what could go wrong with that, right? Yeah. <laughs> you look by the eye Who sees a flaw with this plan? And not me. Packing 11 inches are of fear, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you- <laughs> Folded in half. No. <laughs> uh, no, so which one of the good sites? I mean, look, um, there's mm, – yeah, sh- the ones that work for me are the more traditional ones. Like, yeah, Match, you got you know the online dating sites – and and what's funny is I had this sort of and Woody, you were part of this man. I had a had a profile that was sort of written oh, in I this kind of this flowery profile. prose that was more like a short story. I tried to differentiate myself because I didn't want to be the schmo that was out there saying, you know, I'm a good guy and you know I, I like I like you know I like long walks on the beach, blah blah blah. I'm like Dude, I want to try were that schmo. It was just a longer story. It was a longer story, and it was a short story. I'm like, you know what? Let me do that. I like writing. And it was a, basically, it was, and I might have mentioned this last time, it was me, you, Ian, and Trey, all the guys that went on this that surfing trip we went on in February, which I think mm-hmm. you made a video about. And we were sitting there in the Flying Saucer, this local bar in, in Raleigh, and we're um, you know, talking about the trip. And then all of a sudden, I look across the room, and there she is, you know, and, I'm, and I'm, I kind of make eye contact, and you guys are like, go get her, and blah, blah, blah. And, and that was my that was my profile, and I ended up. If you remember this, man, I'm like I forwarded you the text of it, and I said, "Woody, do you think it's it's okay if I use your real name? You know, I don't want to." And I think it was you or Ian that said, "Dude, that is the gayest thing." It was, I've dude. Ever seen. Did you, I'm, now let us know. Did it work? Did you get any guys from that thing? Did I get any guys? <laughs> <laughs> I assume that was your goal. I read that shit. That was gay as hell. <laughs> It was it's a great. It got like the really kind of earthy, crunchy literary types with kind of the unshaved armpits and that kind of thing. Oh, not bad. oh yeah. man, you're doing it's, it wrong. Doing it wrong. But what is amazing, man? And people, you know, people say these women say they want a nice guy. But the minute I changed it to, I don't give a fuck. I'm going to break your heart. And I, you know, my profile was like this. It was almost the complete opposite. Not that I'm making this shit up, but it was just. The other side of of you know my personality, and I was like, you know, I'm prob- I'm picky as hell. I'm probably going to reject you, and you know, I- I'm going to break your heart, that kind of thing. And I want this and that, and I don't want fake boobies. I'm, you know, it was just very specific and sort of cocky as hell, and sort of funny too. And you wouldn't believe it was a, you know, the amount of of just interest I got out of that versus the nice guy was unbelievable. You know, and it, it, yep. that tells something. Dude, do you, you remember know? that chick that had the, the, a similar profile, really? She was like, look, I know I've got it all going on. I have my act together. If you don't, don't write me. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. Dude, she was hot. That she was, was hot. Yeah, th- absolutely. There was the challenge you're looking for. And she didn't chick. write you back, did she? That was the rare Dan miss. 
It was well, I wouldn't say it's rare. I mean, I get rejected all the time, and that's the thing about that's the thing about this online or even just dating in general is that you mm-hmm. got to get used to rejection. You, yeah, you know, yeah, it's yeah. it's part of it. You know, and it was a growth experience for me not to get too. You know, <laughs> I made a video about that recently. You know, back in my my summer at seventeen years old, I um. Uh, I lived at the beach and I had this concept of disposable women and I didn't care if my success rate was like 15, 20% because that could be five girls in a day. Like there were so many right. girls at the beach. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you just need to get some volume cooking, baby. And, yeah. uh, and you know, you, you get your girls, you'll have a date that night. Just, you know, don't, don't latch on to one particular one. There's lots of good ones out there. Hits that, hit some. Yeah, don't don't put one on a pedestal because it is it will not work out. And if you don't get a date, that's perfectly fine too. Go freaking go game with your friends or go rock climbing or something. Whatever you know, did, it's not all about say, that. There were did like three something? things that women are looking for. Did, did, in, I'm sorry, Wayne. I wanted Dan to throw out the whole what what was it? Sunglasses, watch, and shoes. Yeah. So this is uh, I don't know. It's just my theory. I've heard it from somewhere, but women in general. Um, well, first off, if you dress like a, a, a slob, you gotta you gotta fix that shit. It is, you know, and preferably hit the gym. Try to get some muscle tone a little bit if you can, but get get a look going. And you don't have to necessarily yeah. get women crazy are shallow with it. as fuck. But but they pay attention, and they pay attention. <laughs> in my theory, they pay attention to three things, right? They don't, you know, your shirt's one thing, your your pants are the other, but they really focus on three things. They really focus on your shoes. Especially, I think shoes are the most important thing. Um, they focus on how you accessorize, specifically the watch, right? And I, I rolled in one day and I was wearing like some Casio bullshit, you know, runner's watch that I had for like 10 years. The strap was kind of fraying on the side and, you know, and this really good looking waitress who I was sort of hidden on, um, you know, and I'm like, we were talking about whatever. And she immediately went to my watch and said, dude, my brother's got a watch like that. And sort of in this really, condescending tone right and that that it gives you kind of a perspective they pay attention to those kind of things so you're going for like and a then, diver's watch maybe uh like you know, analog an, you're like an of action right so mm-hmm. it's it it depends on what what you're looking for right i mean just something that's a little bit higher quality mm-hmm. um me you don't have to spend more you don't have, you can spend a hundred bucks and people will say shit a hundred bucks for a watch it's outrageous but for a watch, I mean, it's a piece of jewelry when you think about it, and you can spend a hundred watt dollars on like a fossil or one of those kind of watches, and they're solid and they look good. And um, it's I notice when I'm out with these women, man, I you when you're conscious and you pay attention, they will look down at there. You they'll look at your watch, they'll look at your shoes, they'll look at your hair, they'll look at you know if you've got sunglasses, they'll look at that. I mean, they pay attention. Not saying that that's you have to go out and please them because there's some jokers who are so bad they're good. Like they dress like freaking slobs, and hey, you, you hey. know the theory. He's yeah. spitting the truth here. Dress <laughs> pants, silk shirt, nice watch. Hey, that, yeah. that's, that's the way I pull my women. You wear a nice dress pant, a silk shirt. You're gonna get even if you're my size. I'm like 340 pounds now, and I'll have a girl look at me over a guy that's you know wearing a fuck you t-shirt, and you know. <laughs> And a ball cap. Because, you know, they look at me and they're like, man, he's got his act together. Maybe right. I want to be around him. And he's not bullshitting you. And if you do a profile on, like, a dating site, let me tell you, if you have materialistic things, like like for me, for example, I have a couple nice trucks. Put those in your motherfucking pictures. <laughs> that right there alone will get people's attention. Yeah, it's all about differentiating yourselves. And if you look at, if you read, and I, I you know, if you want... An entertaining read, you know, at the game, I would go out by, by Neil Strauss, you know, and he was, his book looks like a Bible. It's shameless. You know, it's got the nice leather bound. It's about the same size as a Bible. It's got the little flip out bookmark, you know, the silk one that's sort of built into the binding and you can go <laughs> flip down. It's got that thing. And uh, they, those guys, they, they call it peacocking, where then you get really outrageous. Like you wear... Something that is like a you know a tie on with a pair of jeans and a, and a t-shirt or like um, a top hat, <laughs> ridiculous <laughs> stuff. Or one guy said you know he had like a sign. This guy his pickup line was mystery, and he had this little flashing LED sign as a necklace that said "I am mystery" or some shit like that. And um, it's they call it peacocking, which is just about getting attention. You know, there's a whole thing, dude. It's fascinating, and I thought. 
And this is the difference between you and me, Woody, is that, you know, you've, I'm sitting here in my pajamas ready to go to bed and like your night's just starting, you know, and I, <laughs> and, uh, you know, these guys go out and they freaking just, they work it and they work their game. They get rejected a and million they times. Care. They don't care. It's just about powering through and persevering. And then they, you know, these are, by the so, way, these are not, these are not good looking people necessarily. They're metrosexual average looking guys that may be short maybe a little bit fat but it's all about women care less about the looks meaning mm-hmm. you're you know whether you're a 10 and more about your game so and, or, yeah Dan, Go ahead. you're dating a lot of girls here how come you're going seinfeld on them and like finding little pity flaws and moving on to the next one again and again Oh God! Just because one has a toe that's a little bit longer than the other, I mean, I, <laughs> that is a showstopper. It's a showstopper, brother. Yeah, dude. Like every time you show me, like you, what Dan does is he pulls out his iPhone. He's like, "Hey, Woody, look, this is my date for tonight." And I'm like, "Oh my God!" Like you are pulling okay. some some smoking yeah. hot tail here, and yeah. uh, and then he'll be like, "Yeah, I don't know." Yeah, you know, like what was wrong with her? Nah. <laughs> like, there's nothing wrong with these girls, and you just move on to the next one. What, what's going on yeah. there? There's, there's probably my therapist would tell you there's probably some kind of attachment to my ex-wife, maybe or who knows? I don't fucking know, man. It's just, is it fear of uh, commitment? Is it who knows? I mean, but you know, everyone's got their preferences, and you know. Th- <sighs> I don't know. I maybe think we women get too close, and I'm like, shit, this is getting a little bit too, too, you know, crazy for me. But, or maybe you know, I'm not a big fan of fake breasts, and, and you would be, you would be amazed, Woody, about the amount of fake breasts in this area. At least the sampling that I've had, mm-hmm. you know, which is a pretty, you know, it's pretty decent. It's, yeah, it's, it's quite the sample size. You, 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 <laughs> no, it's not like yeah. It's, <laughs> damn. Can I ask you a question? Out women, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. I, I've recently been going hard into the dating scene as well. And, you know, at times I would send out 20 messages a day. Like I said, I always look at it like this. Every girl I don't, you know, try to ask out is a girl I'm already getting rejected by. And that's my mentality on it. Absolutely. And um, and by consequence, you get three or four girls juggling at one time. Is the best way to do it with text messages? And how do you keep from getting them too attached to you too quickly? To attach, well, the women typically will want to get attached to you pretty quickly. It's just the way I think women typically want to be in a relationship, which is eh, not all of them, but I'd say eighty percent of them. Um, the text messaging thing, and look, I'm I'm um, I'm older than Woody, so you guys think he's ancient. I'm I'm a couple <laughs> years older than he is. So the whole text messaging thing, you know, I'm I'm technical, right? So I'm on top of it, but I never I would always want to call him on the phone. And the sort of what I found is that women typically. It's easier just to text message and deal with them that way. Um, but you mentioned something about rejection. Rejection is absolutely part of this, and you cannot have thin skin when it comes to being rejected. They will reject your ass all day long, and they will test you. That's the whole thing. Is they, a lot of these women, little things they do are, are there to test you. you know, they call, I call them shit tests, and I got that out of, directly out of the book. And <laughs> There's ways to fail these things. You know, if, if they give you a hard time about something and you sort of collapse and apologize, you're like, this is not a guy that's going to stand up for me. You know, this is a guy, that, I want someone that's going to, you, you don't give him a straight answer. You sort of give him a little, a little sarcastic response back. You know, that's sort of how you pass these little things. And it sounds like a game and it sounds sort of ridiculous. And people say, well, God, why? Uh, dating, it's, it's hard. It's exactly a game. That's all dating is. You throw, yeah, you, you throw yourself yeah. out there and you play the game. If you jump the hurdles, you get rewarded. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but you guys might need to know a little more about Dan, right? Like, it, Dan is the is a pleaser by nature. So yes. for him to actually push back on even the smallest of issues is uh, outside who he was three years ago. I'm on the other side of this, right? Like, I, you know, I, I'm listening to this and I work hard to, you know, make those consolidations to, to, to de-escalate, you know, little arguments. And, and like you say, oh, you know, you need to pass the shit test. I'm on the other side of it. You know, I, I need to, to pass the, uh, you know, the other, you know, the de-escalate test, you know, from time to time. There's no the shortage of sarcasm and pushing back. In, in yeah, but you're, you've been married for how long? Uh, fifteen years actually. Yeah, so there's this. It's a different, right? I mean, once you're in a relationship, I think it's the trust is there. And I mean, look, mm. Jackie absolutely trusts you a hundred and ten percent. You know, and so there's no, 
you know, she's doing less shit tests, I think. We're talking about right. dating uh, out of the I street. See. We're talking about women that are trying to figure your ass out. Here's right? another question for you, Dan. Yeah. What about what all the fucking women would like kids? Like, every one I've ever talked to had, like, kids. It's ridiculous. Well, What do you do with that kind of scenario? How do you adjust to the child? At- well, look, I've got four kids. i got four daughters. And so um, the demographic I'm in... I would almost rather – I don't know how, you are, how old you are, but for me, I would almost prefer that. And the reason why is because, well, one, you know, it's, I'm in a hard age right here because a lot of the women that I want to date – and by the way, I date down. I don't date up. So there's these <laughs> – <laughs> you talking about age? Age, yeah. It's yeah. It's, it's less about the women with – kids i don't want to date women that are older than me i know it's a hang up and i know it's like it sounds shallow as hell but for me it's i just i want to date down i want to date and <laughs> i say this is gonna laugh i want to date down to like the mid 30s <laughs> right? um but you know that's that's the weird you know you're gonna get women who haven't had kids yet they've delayed it they've been professionals and they want a guy that's gonna provide kids for them and i don't want that i mean i've been trapped fixed and released Back in yeah. the population, I've got. I had the procedure done. I'm done. <laughs> the procedure and I'm, done. I don't I'm, want I'm any not. Part and of that's that a procedure. funny story, just by itself. Maybe for another time. But, um, yeah. I, to me, that doesn't bother me at all. In fact, I would almost prefer it because then you don't have to deal with. And it depends what you're looking for. If you're looking for a relationship, um, you know, you need to find someone where you've got similar goals or whatever. But if you're just had, looking to have fun with like the younger ones, then you know, kids don't even come into the picture. I'm not going to introduce anyone to my kids for a while. You know, that's just sort of the way it is. All right. So, I don't have to answer your question. Thanks for stopping by, Dano. I appreciate it. Yeah, Everyone asked for a Dan update. Now we got it. Yeah, man. And at some point, um, I don't know. <laughs> I, the one thing I did want to mention, man, I think you made a video was about uh, me getting back to this dude. Remember the guy I confronted? Oh, did, yeah. Have you told him about that yet? So I think I have done the update. I think we um as, Yeah, okay. As far yeah. as everybody knows, you kind of decided that you weren't sure you wanted to pursue it, you weren't sure you wanted to tell his wife or or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I want to just I want to thank this community here specifically because you know, it got that behind me. You know, I got a little Charlie Sheen tiger blood in me, man, and I confronted the guy and I know you wanted me to do more, but uh <laughs> it was good enough for me. All right. No, we can still break his legs. I'm thinking some kind of like video, some kind of I don't know. Do you have anyone you know on the podcast that maybe wouldn't mind making a a video, maybe post it to YouTube and make fun of him? Is that oh, possible? I knew a guy like that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, we could make a video of him breaking his legs. <laughs> <laughs> could make a video of his house. Anyway, yeah, All right, yeah, man. Have a video if you ever mailbox. decide to uh, to go public on this guy, we're here, man. We, we'll do yeah. it on the podcast. It'd be awesome. <laughs> okay, man. Thanks. All right, thanks, Dana. All right, hey. So there's a new patch out for Black Ops. Have you Apparently, guys tra- my mic's been off for a long time. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, we haven't heard you in quite some time. Um, what was I gonna say? Uh, oh, the new Black Ops patch. Who's tried snipers in, in this? Me. What do you think? Uh, I think the uh, PSG one is now OP like a motherfucker. You know what though? So I, Dave Vondahar was tweeting about that. He's like, every time we touch the snipers, this is what happens. For the first three days, snipers are overpowered. For the next three days, snipers are useless and we can't use them anymore. Well, look here, look here. I use the FAMAS eighty percent of the time. And I'm at the point where I'm like, man, is the PSG one better for this map than the FAMAS? Maybe I should set up a sniper class. Imagine that, I, me sniping. My subs will faint. Dude, they even, they've improved the hit detection on it. Really? Yeah. I mean, you get a variable zoom scope and you keep it really low. Just walk around. Bam, 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 bam. It's just like an assault rifle. One shot. When the what? assault rifles take four or five. Hmm. I gotta set my stuff up. I just have... I think I've said it a couple times, but I just moved into this new house and like everything's on the floor. I, I, I want to get on a play now. Huh. <laughs> they do that today? Yeah, they did. Uh, I mean, it, nice there's night. very little to no sway on it as well. All right. So I guess yeah. you were playing that on the Xbox, huh, Wings? Yeah. Yeah. How's your, uh, how's your PS3 doing these days? 
on my PS3? <laughs> yeah, you've been using it? I use my PS3 every day. Netflix still works for me. Yeah. I mean, I play on both, but um, it's it's like the whole thing, like a kid in a candy score. I want to play PS3 more now since I can't play PS3. Is that Does that make sense? <laughs> I love the stream. The stream's like, shut up, Kyle. If you Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Uh. <laughs> well, I mean, well, I mean like, like going into that thing, like if you had to pick one network behind which the company was putting the most uh, like money and effort, you would have to agree that Microsoft was putting more into Xbox Live than it was into PSN. So it doesn't surprise me that if one of them was going to have somebody literally hack and steal everybody's info, it was going to be PSN. That really fun because I have a and I have a PlayStation. I don't know why everybody's freaking out. I got a fucking PlayStation Three. I play that thing. We all have both. Yeah, we all have both. <coughs> fucking Xbox is better. <laughs> I've got a couple well, of know, each. <laughs> so for the single player experience, even though the PSN guys like to to say that their single player games are so much better, you know, I've played them. I have Uncharted. I, I know what they offer. Um, I should have said Uncharted too. But uh, they're really about the same. You can hardly tell the difference between an Xbox and a PS3 game. They're very, very close. I want to uh, say this. Mm-hmm. If, I, if I have a choice between two games on the same platform, I always go with Xbox because of the gamer score on Xbox. Yeah, there's really, so many the gamer features. Score. Yeah, yeah, I like... Uh, here's the thing. Like, everybody, I love when people use that, the, you know, PSN is free as, as like, it's, cat, as, as it's thing. It's like... <laughs> Well, well, I mean, you go to the homeless shelter and get some free food, man, but that's not a, you know, that's not, well, if we're talking about restaurants, you're not going to tell me to go to the fucking homeless shelter because it's free. I'm like, no. You get what you pay for. That's, there's something to be said for that. They said they improved the PS3 audio quality. <clears throat> did they? I, yeah, well, they did. A while back. But the thing is, I mean, you're still stuck with the terrible mics, right? Everyone's using these, like cheapy bluetooth things that came with their cell phone you know hanging off their ear and it's it's it look ps3 voices are still abusive compared to xbox voices and uh and you know i'm gonna sound like a ps3 hater on this it's not that i naturally hate the ps3 it's that i have experience with both of them and you know they're on heck if you're a youtube commentator like the guys on this podcast are then there are a bunch of other PS3 problems too, like you're dealing with all the messages you get and all the friend requests. And how how bad it slows down your PS3. Mm-hmm. That uh, it, <laughs> it's tough. A regular person might not know this, but when you deal with hundreds of me- comments each day, you and you get you get these things stacked up. Like I was twenty thousand deep, and it was literally taking anywhere from ten to fifteen seconds to bring up the XMB for me because the PSN loads all your messages every time you load the XMB. And another thing that happens is when you delete somebody and you don't let the XMB load fully, it hangs up and you got to reset it. And these are just these are small things, but they're annoying. And they, there's things that should be fixed with a PSN. And it, it just feels like Sony is neglecting it. It's like they have this multi-million dollar giant over here, some money-making machine that they don't want to mess with. It's like, whoa, go away. Hmm. Yep. It's now they got so- your personal information. I mean, yeah. it makes me wonder, like, why is feature. something like the PSN down for two weeks to start with? You want to be famous? Just get a PS3 account. They'll they'll yep. share your crap with everybody. <laughs> yeah, there's some. Du- think about this, guys. There's some dude out there right now with a portable hard drive with all of our information on it. Right now, he's got my info. He's got Wings' info. He's got Woody's info. He's got mm-hmm. like fucking George Clooney's info. George Clooney plays PSN. You know he's a fag. Come on. I mean. <laughs> He's got everybody's info right now. Like that's just it's a little yeah. bug. It bugs me a little bit. I hope he's not I, listening to this right now because he plays PlayStation. I know. <laughs> I I feel a little bad about picking on the PS3 guys, but um, it's not that I'm picking on PS3 players. It's I'm that on Sony itself. Yeah, Sony man. This You're is what up. you get when you when you do this bad. You know, this is your problem. This is. I, I think Sony should get sued. Seriously, how they do are. you? Put this large network of, of you know industry together and not properly protect it. Yeah. Yep. Well, I, I'm pretty sure like whenever you like like sign on for the first time for to PSN, you that box you're checking probably says that you can't sue. Hmm. I, I would say so. Like you know those those kind of agreements that are like you know if you want to continue, click X. 
those are usually saying if someone hacks your info and uh, steals your credit card and buys an elephant with it, uh, you're fucked. That's usually what those are saying. Hey, back on the patch thing, uh, they didn't give the details of what they changed about the sniper rifle. And Wing, stop drinking, man. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. Um. They didn't give the patch of what was in the sniper thing. So I put out a video today. And, and I, every time a new patch comes out for um, for Black Ops, I put a little patch up that, hey, this is the change that they made, and I explain it. And on the sniper thing, all it said was something vague, like sniper rifles have been modified. And um, uh, I, I said, you know, hey, Treyarch, if you hear this, then you know, please give us some details about, the, um, about what's changed in the sniper rifle. And Dave Vondahar... He had his grumpy pants on or something because he's like, I'm never telling you never, ever. He's like, everyone hates the, every change we make. I can't deal with it, etc. Gamers don't necessarily get what they want. It's like, dude, you're talking to your freaking customers here. You know, Stop being the way that you're being. Normally, he's, he's really good as a community manager. I've praised him lots of times, but he was freaking grumpy and rude over Twitter today. And... Uh, um, I think they should release the details of what they're doing. People really want to know what changes they make to the sniper rifle or the AK-74U or the G-11 or, or whatever changes they're thinking about making. They should do that as more of an open process. What do you guys think? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I think, agree. I think you should do more like that and less like putting the fucking map pack up, like logo on the fucking starting screen three days early. <laughs> yeah. I'm not even we buying the new map pack. Fuck that Dude, thing. oh, you, well, that's just because you don't play zombies. Uh, all right, now, for anybody out there who plays zombies and likes it, hmm. are, you for, are you guys familiar with, with what the new zombies map is? It's almost as good as the Left 4 Dead single player. Uh-huh. They have right, a little got, more character development. They have a... Got, just, it's okay. Danny Trejo, all right, the Mexican guy from the Machete movie and, and many others. Um, it, it, it's, it's, it's like the pocked, mar, pockmarked face guy. Uh, that's on, Sarah that's Michelle always, Geller. Sarah Michelle Geller and uh, Robert England or something. Robert England, who plays Freddy Krueger, the mm -hmm. old school Freddy Krueger. Those are all playable. And then there's another one who I wasn't. Familiar George with. Romero. Well, George Romero is like a boss zombie. Mm -hmm. Like, like I don't. He's not. He's like a non-playable character. And you're on a fucking boat. It's, it's gonna be <laughs> awesome. Yeah, it's gonna I be heard. Awesome. It, does it look like it's on Discovery, or they reuse some of the map elements from Discovery? Maybe, yeah, like maybe you're a boat off the coast of Discovery or something. This is interesting. Like, here's some of the things they mentioned in it that caught my attention that I worry about. They made it sniper friendly. So, you know, like if you play Ascension, it's not really sniper friendly. You know, it, it, so much of the action is so up close. Here, there's a lot of like flinging across the map and being able to snipe across the map and kill zombies that way. Interesting stuff. But the thing is, they need seriously powerful weapons. You know, like it's still going to be kite people and ray gun them. Unless this sniper is a one-hit kill for a long time, yeah. That's yeah. You know, I hope that they did that. I hope that they made you know some of these new tactics. That they, if sniping across the map takes two shots a zombie, dude, don't even try it. Yeah, you know, like yeah. you're wasting my time. I have a uh, sneaky suspicion that the guys who test at Treyarch really fucking suck at zombies. They need me and some <laughs> testing for zombies because you if you give us about five hours to test that thing, we're gonna make it to level thirty-five plus. And I mean, not, not that that's like a world record number, but we're going to make the 35, 38, 40, and we're going to be able to say, hey, look at this. We just shot this guy 18 times with a sniper rifle, and he's still crawling at me. Like, it's bullshit. Like, what's the point of having the sniper rifle as a, as a, mm -hmm. gun, in, as a gun in there if it's completely fucking useless? That thing needs to not only be a one-shot, but when you upgrade it, it needs to be an area of effect weapon. Yeah, like, it needs it, to... I want it yeah. to be a one-shot... With, like, collaterals out the wazoo. I want to kite zombies and get, like, eight pieces. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That would be yeah. cool. Yeah, that If you did that, then, um, you know, suddenly these, these sniper rifles would be viable. You know, why yeah. is it that these developers always suck at the game? They spend so much time making it and creating it and balancing it, and you still can't play it? It's... Oh, I don't know. I, I think, like, so... I, I put up a video today, and I was pretty complimentary of Treyarch for giving us another patch. You know, and I said, look, I feel really supported. A lot of the things that they fixed, I haven't even seen yet. They fixed an out-of-map glitch on Grid, maybe? I'm not positive about the map. Have you ever seen anyone go out of the map on No. Grid? Right. You know? Have you ever seen anyone go out of the map on Overgrown? Yes. Yep. Have you ever seen anyone rock glitch? Yes. Have you seen them go out of the map on Ambush? Yes. It's been years. They still do this stuff. 
you know, Treyarch is fixing these things before I've even heard about it. And not only do I play a lot of Call of Duty, I know a lot of people that play a lot of Call of Duty. And um, this is like every day for me. And I've never even heard of this. They are on top of it. They are fixing it. And a guy's like, Woody, you don't understand. You know, they should have fixed this stuff even before it was released the first time. The fact that they patched it means that it was broken. And they are wrong. There are some things about it that were broken. For example, the sound. Right When the sound came out in Black Ops, it was worse than it is now. It's On a scale of 1 to 10 now, the sound is like a 3. It's shit. It's terrible. It sucks. But when the sound came out originally, it was like a 0.5. It was the worst sound ever in the Call of Duty series, hands down. And um, uh, that sort of thing was so obvious, it was so easy to catch, that it should have been fixed before the game was released. However, people rubbing into little rocks and managing to get inside, uh, tweaks on the weapons, that's forgivable. That's stuff that's really hard to get perfect before a game is released. And and Treyarch's doing a pretty good job with that stuff. Yeah. I don't know, they do a lot of good things, and then there's some things, there's some areas where they're lacking. You're never going to get perfection out of one of these game companies. If they if they catered to just, to like, the three of us, you know, a lot of people wouldn't be able to have fun. I want Call of Duty 4 sound system back. Like, I want, yes. like, there's a lot of things from COD 4 I want, but seriously, that sound system is epic. Mm-hmm. I, I want to be able sound- to hear the motherfucker walking across the map and be able to I know, right? <laughs> right. Want, Modern Warfare 2 had pretty good sound, too. Eh, it, it wasn't as good as COD, nothing, nothing go- is as good as COD 4 sound. You know why? Like, it, it's noisier. That's the thing. Like, there's always Harriers up in Modern Warfare 2. There's always Chopper. There's always, like, like there's constant noise in Modern Warfare 2. Whereas in uh, COD 4, it felt like unless there was a Chopper over your head, you had great sound. It was almost like the like a Bare Bones playlist over in COD 4. Yeah. But, um, yeah, they did. COD 4 had great sound. Modern Warfare 2, if you go back to it, like, I hadn't played it in ages. And then Onslaught was like, hey, this is epic. We should try it. And, yeah, the tubes are still a problem. But, um, you know, I went, <laughs> this is what happened. I went back to Modern Warfare 2. First game, I jump in, and uh, my, my team was, uh, we were winning, but then we lost all three flags. We start losing. I had five flag caps. I joined with 165 tickets in the game, and I led the lobby and brought us back for the win. I was, felt so psyched. I was like, well, Modern Warfare 2 is excellent. And um, uh, I, I, every sound, the gun sounds, the footstep sounds, all the sounds, it was so good. I had forgotten how badly Black Ops had screwed up the sound. And, um, yeah, they, I don't know... Like, everyone knows that visuals are important in games, yet somehow developers forget that sound is important in games, too. And then they do things to intentionally fuck it up. They do things like rockets launching, where the, the screen shakes... Who thought I wanted screen shaking in my game? Who thought I wanted <laughs> trains with, like, big horns going by? This is... It was an embarrassingly bad idea to have these screaming sounds in a game, and uh, you know, whatever. They did, Treyarch screwed it up. I think that they're not going to be able to fix it. I think it's going to damage their reputation for their next game out, and uh, what are you going to do? Can we talk about... Should, I think they should ahead. stop um, catering to making letting motherfuckers hide. I'm serious. They fucked the sound up because they wanted you know people not to be able to use headsets to their advantage. And then they put a perk, a perk in uncontested that lets you hide off UAV. Then they took kill streaks, quit stacking, so the UAV be more popular. But more people just hide from it. If you get if you get bitches the chance to hide, them motherfuckers are gonna hide. And all that's gonna do is make the game ten minutes long. I'm still stuck on stackable kill streaks, right? Like so, I, I could make both I love sides of death. the argument. So. The upside of stackable kill streaks is that you get them a little more often. The highs are higher. Everything like it's fun to have these stackable kill streaks. It's fun to get my predator and then quickly work my way to like a pave low. You know, the predator does something. Uh, if the harrier strike works out, I've got a pave low up, and then all of a sudden, you know, I'm, I'm rolling in the kills, and it, it's it's fun. On the other hand, the rich get richer. The whole point of the game becomes to like you know work your way to a kill streak instead of the more run around gun fighting stuff you know what i don't run around gunfight to begin with and most people that are good at the game don't do it either and the people that are good at the game still are at the top of the list and the people that suck at the game still aren't getting their pay blow so why not let the rich get richer because people that play on the weekend they're not going to get that pay blow unless the kill streak stack and they'll have a better time when they do get that pay blow when their kill streak stack with me somebody plays the game all the time i'm gonna have more fun when i go on predator to pay blow 
It's a more. It's yeah. fun around the board. I wouldn't say that people who rush are bad. There are some people out there who rush who just are amazingly successful yeah. at it. You know, but, and that, um, they're in a, they're in a small minority versus the ninety five percent that sucks complete ass and hurt their team. Remember that guy when we had that win streak in Modern Warfare two? Yo, oh my god! And yeah, that one asshole King that would not God stop. <laughs> Yeah. He's that ninety five percent. I mean, he's the guy like I don't care. I bought the game. I don't play how I want to. I mean, dude, just if you weren't in the game, we We'd would won. better. Yeah, we won. We lost like seventy five hundred to seventy four hundred, and it was the end of a huge kill, a huge win streak. That was it was like one hundred eighty nine games or something. Or maybe that was a different win streak. Maybe yeah. it was eighty games on that one. And rushers always flip spawns. Flipping spawns is the worst thing you can do in TDM. Mm -hmm. Seriously. Uh. Yeah, yeah, that's especially true for domination. In TDM, I have a hard time getting the spawns to really stick anyway. Like it, maybe maybe you've got it locked down at a level I don't, but in TDM, it just seems like they're going to start moving around most of the time. But um can but uh <clears throat> can we talk about vegal vegazzling? What is vegazzling? <laughs> Of course we can talk about <laughs> All right. bedazzling. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, have you ever heard of bedazzling wings? What is that? It's when you bed oh. bedazzling something is like, uh, you ever see girls with cell phones or maybe like different types of like electronics and they've stuck these little jewels all over them? Yeah, I've seen that, yeah. Okay, well that's bedazzling. And people used to do it like in the 80s with their jeans and stuff like that. Well, next level bedazzling is vag-azzling. That's right. You take rhinestones and like shit like that, glue it to the pussy. That's right. Dress things up a little bit down there. And uh, well, did they was, come off or they like like? Well, I mean, event eventually, yeah, they do. But like, they're glued on there for wh however long they are glued on there. But vajazzling is becoming pretty popular. Apparently, I was talking to a uh, a girl I used to know uh, a couple days ago on the phone, and she was talking about vajazzling and how she, it freaked her out that people were actually doing it. And I was like, I'm all for it. And she's like, what if you're going at it down there and one of them comes off and, like, goes in? And I'm like, well, no big deal. Then it, that's next level sex. Now it's treasure hunt time. We're going in. All right? We got to find that bad boy. <laughs> like, hold up, baby. Let me take my watch off. <laughs> We're going to find that thing. Like, but I just thought the jazzling was the coolest thing ever. And they don't, they do, like, crazy patterns. Like, I saw one that was a butterfly that, like, covered the whole vagina. And, like, sometimes it's, like, something really classy, like, just, like, a row of diamonds and stuff. It looks pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. If I had a vagina, I'd totally vajazzle it. I'm thinking about cockazzling myself. Cockazzling? Go ahead and do it. Yeah, go ahead and get the cock, cock, cock bedazzled. Go ahead and do it. Why not? Get the diamonds encrusted around the shaft. Oh, Hell yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Just, like, a big <laughs> ring of diamonds right there. Like, bling. Oh, man. That'd be almost as bad as that one kid that braided his shit. <laughs> No, I mean, this ain't gonna be any braiding. That's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if you go on, uh, if you like Google, it's Vag, like, like V right. A J. I gotta okay. see this. I was doing a little bit of research while you guys were talking. Uh huh. <laughs> it turns out Jennifer Love Hewitt is a proponent of the jazzling. Awesome. And, um, uh, you might be surprised to hear this, but there are some photos on the internet of this. And, uh,. You know what? I'm not entirely against it. I can see the appeal of the jazzling. Um, yeah, just just dress up the lady a little bit. Here's one who did a butterfly. I, I think she has skills. I saw that. Yes, you, you saw that. You, yeah, well, I mean, you get those done. Like you, you would like go into like a place who vajazzles, and you'd be like, vajazzle me up. Let, let's get it on." You know, like pick out your jewelry, like whatever you want, like your your pattern. I mean, I'd uh -huh. like to have like a, I don't know. I'd, I'd have to like I'd like to have the Battle of Gettysburg down there, something like that. I gotta like, say, this shit looks tacky <laughs> as fuck. <laughs> here, here's one that has HTML in it. You know, she's like image here, and uh, and that is kind of nerd sexy to me. So, so yeah, I'm I'm gonna have to endorse the jazzling in um. In, just imagine, in the podcast. Well, just, uh, Kyle, have you ever just imagine <laughs> you ever getting a girl's pants off and she's vajazzled? And Dude, it's like a pajazz over like her ex boyfriend or some shit, and she right, forgot. Oh well, now you ruined it. Now you went and yeah, broke it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But, dude, if you go down kid. there and you're like, it's not just a vagina, it's a disco vagina, then you yes. win. <laughs> yes, it's funny you said that because that's what the girl I was talking to said. She's like, the day, whenever the day comes when men start fucking disco balls, all right, I'll get it done. But till then, 
No. That no, day is not... here. You let her know. <laughs> <laughs> the time has come. <laughs> the time has come for the disco vagina. <laughs> and <laughs> it, it's, like, it's... I just imagine maybe her, like... like <clears throat> How well are these equipped? Circle. I don't know, man. They're, I, I'm pretty sure they're on there quite well. Like, like they're not saying, hot. What if I run my hands down there? Can, will some of them come off? I'm imagining it's a little like um, crazy glue, right? You know, so uh, does crazy glue stick forever? No. Does it stick pretty darn well? Yes, it does. I think they right. use spirit gum, and uh, I was I was messing around with like some fake beards, like like movie quality fake beards, and you use spirit gum, and it's I think it's derived from like tree sap. It's like some super duper glue, but it's safe for your skin. You get it off with alcohol. Mm -hmm. And I would imagine they use that because that stuff will glue your fucking fingers together like crazy glue, but it comes right off with alcohol. So it's it's probably using spirit gum. Right. I bet but, you whoever yeah. started this trend is making a killing right now. Really? I, because I, I don't I, see them collecting uh, royalties off the things I do in my bedroom. Yeah, well, I would say this, though. There's not many women who are going to be like, who are going to be, there are plenty of women who would be down for this, but it's like getting to a place that vajazzles, first of all. Because like, look, all right, let me say this. Ladies, I vajazzle, okay? Just show up. I got all the tools. I'll do it. <laughs> what, what? You, you've heard it here first. Kyle's say, offering his vajazzling services on, yeah, on me. Yeah. <laughs> you've got my P.O. box address. It's on my channel. Just show up. I, I'm, I'm there every day at 3 p.m. I got my hot glue gun and a whole bag of <laughs> Go back to the rhinestone. We'll get in the back of the truck. You guys, hot glue sticks and specs. <laughs> what could go wrong? Right? <laughs> Any pattern you want, whatever you need. And I gotta say, some of this breast stuff is actually pretty sexy, but I don't want to dick any of this, like, vagina stuff they're doing. Like, who cares about a vagina that says juicy and, like, 13 different colors of rhinestones? That would turn me off, actually. I would like the but I think some of them are really sexy, especially the ones that actually aren't on, like, the the business end of the vagina that are up a little bit higher, like, like that are more right, right, that yeah, the decorative like, stuff. Imagine if you could see it, like, you could just make out the top of it, like, through up on the above the jeans or something, right? That'd, I, just, that'd be hot. I think fake jewels are the new pubic hair, yes, yes. <laughs> I like, imagine if they just had like a, a, a landing strip of like white diamonds, and you're like, how far does that go down? And she's like, all the way, that'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I think that one guy's right. The vajazzle seems like the new tramp stamp. I'm okay yeah. with that. Yeah, no, no, right. You know, let us know in advance. <laughs> you know, like you know, to put it out at the bar. Why don't you instead of a tramp stamp, just wear a hat, like just a DTF hat, and then we know who to talk to. Well, not me, me in another life, like the hypothetical me. Yeah, yeah. We know who to talk to. Me. Me, if, I'm the Kyle. Like yes, Kyle <laughs> is the hypothetical me. That's perfect. Yeah, but yeah, if anybody <laughs> wants to just kids are scratching their head what DTF means at this point. <laughs> well, oh, I'm not gonna lie. If there's a dude out there that would that that would be agree for me to use a hot glue gun to attach some jewels to his junk, I'd do it just for the lols. <laughs> like that'd be the funniest <laughs> shit ever. I'd film that and upload it. I have just definitely to... seen naked things on YouTube. Make a go of it, Kyle. Yeah, yeah. Like, like I, Kyle put the video of him like biting a pillow. Like, yeah. all right, Peach. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's pajazzling episode one. And oh, just, no. just screams. Just scream. It just gets worse, right? You know, Kyle, you down for some anazzling? No, nah, fuck off. <laughs> Why do you not even go there? I instantly, like, I didn't even have to be like, huh? But no, I know what, I mean, yeah, no. <laughs> uh -uh. No, no. All right. Hey, you know what? I've got a topic I want to talk about. Games that copy Call of Duty. So I, I watched um, Quality Time with Hutch. You know, they do this thing on, on Machinima Respawn, usually pretty good. And um, uh, Hutch talked about how it was kind of bad that people are copying Call of Duty. You know, they, they all come out with their perk systems. They all come out with their customizable kill streaks. And then it seems like every first-person shooter is very Call of Duty-like. And he kind of um, he had a little frustration with that, that he wanted you know, more innovative ideas, more original concept. And... Um, I, I thought of it a little different. Like to me, Call of Duty is is pretty darn good, and I want them to copy a lot of aspects out of it. One of the ones I bring up all the time is kill cams. You know, if a game doesn't have a decent kill cam, that game usually sucks. You know, I would play Medal of Honor, and you would just freaking get hit by Zeus's lightning bolt for reasons that you didn't know. There was some camping spot across the map, nothing showed, characters didn't pop against the background. You just found yourself insta dead with no reasoning behind it. 
in Halo, you're usually not quite as clueless, you know, as to why you died. You know, you got shot or whatever. But if I could see myself from their perspective and what went wrong, I would have learned faster about Halo. You know, learned you know how to how to get into that game. Kill cams are awesome, and now I, I see first person shooters that don't have them, and it's like, what? I can't learn from my mistakes. Well, then I don't even want to play your game. It, it sucks. So, um, uh, um I, I guess they just express some resentment, it seemed, for copying ideas, and I want all the best ideas copied all the time. Yeah, I'm I'm the same way. If Coke would not be where it's at without Pepsi, Ford would not be where it's at without Chevrolet. They bake about the same product, but they have different changes with it. I'd be totally down for that. Put a game out just like Call of Duty in March, yeah, and put it, Call of Duty out in November. I'll play them both. Yeah, you know, it, they should have different times. That's important too. But like you know, on the fourth uh, Chevy thing, right? If Chevy all of a sudden starts putting out trucks where your cell phone communicates with the radio over Bluetooth, and now you have this hands-free built-in thing, and all you did was sit down, that's awesome. Ford is good for integrating that too. You know, I don't know who did it first, but right, you know, hypothetically, that's something that's an improvement. Copy it, bring it to your game. Theater mode was in Halo, and I guess you could argue that Call of Duty copied it from Halo. Thank you. You know, that's good. We have better videos on YouTube. We have, you know, sometimes if your recording doesn't work, you have an opportunity to get it again, even though um, it's not perfect, right? If I see a theater mode video, I typically don't watch it because it's all wrong and lagged and stuff. But um, uh, unless they're using it creatively, dolly cams and stuff. Back on topic, take the best things, copy them. I don't know that it has to be, you know, the, the class system. Some of, some of the things they brought up were pretty good, right? The customizable classes, things that, that don't copy it so directly, but please look at the innovation in other games and use that to improve yours. It's a good yeah. thing. I also like the fact that it lessens the learning curve for a new game for me. Kill cams? No, like learning curve altogether. Like I know these are my oh. created classes. Well, this game has perks similar to Call of Duty. I guess this perk will be used the same way as the one in Call of Duty. Yeah. You know, map layouts, different things like that. It yeah, makes the good. game easier, more you know, able to pick up faster. The big but thing, I mean, just... You know, I'll jump in. The big thing yep. for me on that is usually the button mapping. So the, the, the Nirvana is customizable button mapping, right? You, you really want to have... Uh, you, you, it'd be great if you could make your controller do anything you want your controller to do. Customize the whole darn thing. But... Uh, if you don't have that, the next best thing is to make them the standard. You know, and by standard, with the exception of a few game mechanics that are a little bit different, Call of Duty, Crisis, Gears of War, Borderlands, Battlefield, Medal of Honor, you know, the, all the games in that have roughly the same button layout. You know, I can play Call of Duty and Bad Company 2 on the same day and not feel like, you know, I'm retarded and that I don't know what all these things do. On the other hand, if I go from Halo to Call of Duty, you know, what, what is the reload button? The reload button in Halo is the throw a grenade at your team in Call of Duty. Is uh-huh. That, uh-huh. <laughs> like, I don't want that. You know, that's terrible. They, they really need to standardize on the button mapping. Now, I get that some games have fancy mechanics. Like Crisis is a good example where you have those armor abilities. So you, with an innovation like that, you have to change things up at least a little bit. But for the most part... Things are about right. The reload buttons are about in the same place. The the, the aim is the left trigger. The shoot is the right trigger. And, and stick to that standard as much as you can or, in the perfect world, uh, offer customizable buttons so that you I know, can get into your game quicker. You know what I would do to differentiate my game from Call of Duty but have the same kind of layout? Call of Duty has the perk system, right? Mm-hmm. How about we do away with the perk system make a game almost just like Call of Duty but instead of like enhancing your character with like preset perks, have it with attribute stats. Like strength would like make your make you have less recoil when you're shooting the weapon because you have more steady hands. You know speed so you can be faster. And when you add to certain categories, other categories go down. And the way you play dictates how well your character does. If you like to run around, your character becomes faster over time. If you like to, you know, aim down sight a lot, your character becomes stronger over time or likes to run and jump, you become stronger. <laughs> you know, integrate an attribute system no. into it instead of no. a perk system. I like this because somebody um somebody tweeted me the other day and it was really fucking funny. They took a they had in their subscription box they had like five year videos stacked up and um and they took a screenshot and the uh the thumbnail for all five videos was a FAMAS aiming down sights. I thought that was so fucking funny. <laughs> <laughs> because it's just a random like moment in your videos but it was all aiming down sight with a FAMAS. I, that was fucking it, awesome. Cause I, I got that idea from like 
well, basically I was truck shopping lately, and basically trucks get to know their driver. The computer system adapts to you, how mm-hmm. well, if you like to go off the line and things of that nature. Why not your character, how you play over time, adjust to you? If you like to rush more, you get more speed. If you like to, you know, stand around and play defensive style, you get stronger and maybe a little bit more health. You know, different things. You could, I'm not really thinking the system out, but Dude, that right there would work. That'd be awesome, man. Like, if my character, for example, would have a 13-inch dong from all the teabagging I do. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> we have, like, extra fa- fast crouch ability. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. So you can teabag at, like, the speed of light. Like, bam, 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 bam. Oh, oh! I've got it. This needs to be built in the next Call of Duty. If somebody's listening who's involved, go ahead and steal it. I don't care. It, when someone is in Last Stand, if they get teabagged, it kills them, and you get a special icon for that and points. Imagine if you could run up to a guy in Last Stand, teabag him while he's still alive, and kill him with that. And, and like the, the the kill icon was like a crotch to the face or something. That would be fucking epic. Dude. And you get like. You do enough tea bags and your crotch gets penazzled. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> you just run around all game with like the, your fake jewelry on your penis. <laughs> yeah, and I want Ice Ice Cube's voice to come over and, and say, "Get some!" Like, <laughs> and it can, like, like in Gears, you know, when you're doing like the the finishing moves or whatever they're called, the executions. You know, it's like every time you hit, you get like nine points or whatever. You could do a multi tea bag thing where it's like bang, 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 and it's like plus five, plus five, plus five, plus five. <laughs> And the guy on the ground is just like, no! Another Did variation... You- <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Another variation of Wings' idea is rather than the like attribute abilities being developed by the way you play, you could set them. But even that would be more like a, the next step past the perk system. For example, right now you have... I'm um, trying to think. A lightweight Pro, right? So you run fast. Maybe instead of Lightweight Pro being an on or off switch, you have like a 1 to 20 scale. So I can make my speed a you know 12 right bump it up a little bit above average and then take my recoil and bump that down you know to, to eight you know and you know have all your things average 10 and then figure out what you want you can set up different classes with this class it's going to be all ideal for running but not just i want lightweight steady aim or lightweight state of hand or whatever you know i want lightweight to be an 18 and i want you know something else like you know sway to be really low because you don't plan on aiming down sights all that much anyway you're going to run around and hit fire if they took the perks instead of made them on off made them a gradual system eh, that'd be kind of a cool thing that'd be interesting too I mean, it's just simple shit like that. Another thing you do to different yourself from Call of Duty, have collectible things. Like, Battlefield has dog tags, and people go crazy trying to collect dog tags in Battlefield. Why not have, like, a, a game where you have, like, because people want a sniper game mode. Why not make a sniper game mode where you have to customize your rifle, and then if you kill somebody in the top ten that week on the, like, score per minute, you get your, the rifle shows up on your character's back when you're playing. Or something Thank like that. Thank you very much, yo, Mr. Robot. So, yeah, so you went robot there, but I, I still heard what you were saying, which was yes. you know, it's kind of an achievement based thing, and you know, decorate the guy like that. That'd be cool, man. You know what? That, someone showed me a told me about a game idea I mentioned on my channel before. Imagine free for all in a tournament setting, right? So you know, you win a free for all, you feel nice, right? Everything's cool. Mm-hmm. What if those winners went up to the next round, and then to the next round, to the next round, and maybe like every three hours. You had a a guy who won whatever, like this three hours would be a long time. That'd be like, you know, twelve free for alls in a row, maybe more. And um uh, and then that guy gets something awesome. It should be a notable prize. Maybe a yeah. I don't know what's better than a gold gun, like a platinum gun. Yeah. Maybe maybe he gets a like a whole freaking prestige. Boom. You know, like it should be notable for winning that kind of free for all tournament. That'd be pretty neat. Yeah, or how about this? If you're in like the top ten of score per minute in in a category game type, it has your gamer tag right beside it when people go to find a game type. Here is the top five players, and you're listed right there. So instead of people having to go look you up, it shows you right on the fine match screen who's the top five beasts of this game mode. That way, it gives you incentive to do well in that game mode. That yeah, you're talking about a pretty elite group though. Have you ever been top ten on the leaderboards? No. Yeah, I haven't either. I know some but, guys that have. Like Sam's touched it. Um, Sandy Ravage has touched that. Hashtro. Yeah, but I'd be more. In, I'd be more. In, it'd give you me more incentive to do it if people actually could see me having it. I could be t- number one and nobody would know it, other than like people randomly scrolling through it. If I'm number oh. one each week, dude. If I'm number one, there, 
<laughs> if I'm number one, everyone will know it. It will be my new intro, my outro, my Facebook picture, my Twitter profile. <laughs> if I'm number one, you know, you, what do you see? That WGT on my Skype thing? That's got to change, bitch. If I'm number one in any of these game days, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, that Woody's was Woody. Like, it's lonely at the top, motherfucker. <laughs> Yeah, man. If I'm number one, everybody will know. Yeah, but, but like the standard person, most people just get on and play the game. They don't care who's the number one leaderboard. But if they see your gamer tag up there every time, it give them incentive and be like, "Dude, that's him right there." And they give a person a way to have some sort of like publicity yeah, when like, they normally wouldn't. Can you believe that motherfucker hired a skywriter in South in Conway, South Carolina? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody on Xbox 360, check your shit. <laughs> Look right now. Yeah, man. Some of the ways people get number one is they play a game type that they haven't played before and then, like, back out if they don't get the high-scoring map. So, um, like, when Hastro, he didn't back out, but he got kind of lucky. He played free-for-all. He played, like, five games maybe. And just the way it went, like, he got firing range twice and Nuketown three times or something like that. So that's naturally high-scoring games. And then he beasted in those games, and I think he was actually numbered. He had two accounts. He had like a two and a five in the same week, and uh, and he did that because like if he had beasted on um, array, for example, he probably wouldn't have the score per minute that he was able to get in Nuketown. All right. So there's some like aspects of it that aren't completely fair, but uh, still, I think it's a neat idea. If I was a top guy like that, or you know what, if you're going to advertise it like you say. You might start to recognize consistent people. Somebody wrote in the stream that DeGame360... Do you know DeGame360? No. No? All right. So he's a YouTuber, and uh, he posts up amazing scores. I don't think I've seen him post a video where he got under 100 kills. And uh, I'm told he's consistently number one in domination in the score per minute. So, like, if you started to see those numbers again and again and again, then that'd be pretty interesting. You know, you'd be like, yeah, DeGame, he's the domination guy. He crushes at that game. That'd be, that'd be neat to see. Yeah, dude, it, it's it's funny. People are ridiculously good, and then I try to analyze why they're so good, and it's just like, why is it everything that he tries seems to work out for him? <laughs> you know, and it's, and like I know YouTube, right? I know these are the handpicked videos. I know he doesn't average a hundred kills. He doesn't go one hundred and five every game, right? His Katie's not actually twenty or twenty five or whatever, but still, you know, some guys it just seems to work really well for him. Luck. It's a combination of hand eye coordination and connection it always go, is that's what it comes down to i'm gonna go ahead and time stamp these ideas this is 11 20 p.m 4 28 of 2011 <laughs> verbal time stamp verbal <laughs> time stamp <laughs> i'm just saying because these kind of ideas are going to get picked up and these motherfuckers need to owe me money <laughs> oh my god yeah dude, like, but the um the mmorg i think i got the letters right mmorp yep. massively multiplayer online role-playing game yep yeah um they, uh, uh, you know, they do this stuff, right? They have like characteristics that you know, attribute up a character, and I wouldn't mind seeing that. You know, to go ahead and let me adjust what my what makes my guy good and what you know, where his weak spots are. Let me do it by class, and it'd be kind of fun, I think. How about this? How about like uh, redoing the whole interface and making it more like World of Warcraft? How about like when you go to like jump into a free for all or something? How about all everybody's Call of Duty characters are in like some giant mall? And you're just walking around with your character. He's got his gun on his back, you know. And you just walk into a store that says "free for all" on it. How about we make it more interactive? You like that? I don't like that more than a movie. I don't, I don't like that yeah. either. And you could pick fights with the other players, and and just like and yeah, it'd be <laughs> awesome. On PlayStation Home there now. That's yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, man. I, I, it's, if, it's like you. No, but it's only for Call of Duty, though. Like, we don't want those Viva Pinata bitches in there messing around. Imagine we got guardian guns. up and, like, all of you walking over to the free-for-all store across the mall. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that would piss me off. Like, it might be fun once, and then, then just let me choose it from the menu. I need it to be I'd be ha- No, I'd be hanging out in the food court with my boys. We'd be shooting spitballs at people. Dude would jump <laughs> up, and then, you know, you pull your, hand, your gun out. I'm like, sit down. Sit down, bro. I know you. I know you don't have enough credits to even have bullets in this world. So just sit down. I got three. I got three. It took me four months. I got them. <laughs> you know, like like you know, it, it took you like and make it like that. Make it like four months, and you got three bullets. Like to have yourself a little uh, little mall massacre. You know, here's what, here's what Kyle wants. Kyle, Kyle wants to stand on the stage and have all his guys come around him all day. Just have like a wave of people standing in front of his little stage. Yeah, that worked. 
I mean, I like attention. Sure. I don't know what that has to do with the. You the know mall. what else I'd like to see? Um, awesome. I I think it'd be interesting if kill streaks were matched to classes, right? You know, like yes. if I have a camping class, I might want to run a high kill streak. If I'm going to rush around constantly, like I'm not the game 360. If I'm going to rush constantly, I probably want to run some low ones. I want to get three napalms that game instead of zero dogs. So you know, let me do that. I agree. I think the kill streak should be. A, like, you know, your MP, it, like, in, from COD 4 standards, which is what I still play. You know, your MP5 class, uh, I'd want to run UAV, Napalm, and, uh, maybe, maybe, um, what's this, a helicopter, hel- attack helicopter. But my M16 class, you know, my assault class, and I'm going to sit back and pick people off with, yeah, put some dogs on there. And, you know, you, maybe you've got an objective class with, like, a tactical insertion on it. Yeah, you want this super low kill streaks, like UAV, counter UAV, and maybe Napalm. Yeah, that, that's how it should be. You should have it. I don't uh, know how. You down for a prank call? Yeah, I can do that. All right, I have four choices to start with. <clears throat> the first one is loving male rats, loving young male rats. And you should see this. They were being housed, <clears throat> excuse me, they were being housed in a 10-gallon, yes, 10-gallon tank with four exclamation points, all right? They were covered in their own feces and urine, and they had nothing to eat and no water. Uh, the person keeping in these keeping them in these conditions, let them take them, and now we need to find them homes. So these are sincere rat lovers, four male rats. Here's another one. <clears throat> uh, adult DVDs, each of them are four hours in the North Hollywood area. Another one. Um, oh, let me, let me look at this again. <clears throat> these are, I'll just read it out. Hello, guys. I'm here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh for a couple days looking to have a nice time. I'm ready to be submissive to your every need. I promise your time with me will be a time to remember. Now let's have some fun. I'm staying at an indoor hotel for safety of my clients for donation contact and then a phone number. And uh, apparently she's a certified brain surgeon. <laughs> it says that certified brain surgeon, $60 special in and out to call the girl special. Um, I think what she means, I think by brain surgeon, I think she means she's giving head, Woody. I got that as well. Oh, okay. then, I just, I just make sure you do. I make sure you got it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then here's the last one. Uh, Fleshlight. I guess it's meant to mimic Lupe Fuente. And, um, uh, oh, here's a bonus. It's actually a pair of fleshlights in aginal, or vaginal and anal. So, uh, so there you have rats, adult DVDs. Prostitute or fleshlights? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the stream came up big this time. They had some real winners. They all oh, have phone man, numbers. Those are I, great. I will say the prostitute is Eastern Standard Time, so it's a little late there. I want the fleshlight. You want the... I, I, well, you want more of them? Oh, my God. Just You simmer, motherfucker. Yeah, I want, <laughs> I want to do the fleshlight prank phone call. I think I've got, I already got a funny thing. Let me just run down the stairs. It'll take me like 30 seconds to grab a drink and come right back up. All right. This is going to be funny. (laughs) How is this not the best time for Thursday night ever? (laughs) (laughs) All right. Do you remember how to make Skype phone calls? Yes, I do. Is it... Plus one, and then the ten-digit air phone number. Is that what it is? Yep. Just like dialing out from like real long distance. Sorry, podcast. This is a bit slow. I would like to take this time to uh, go say you need all visit www.youtube.com slash user slash wings of redemption. <laughs> you don't need the slash user. YouTube.com slash Wings of Redemption will take you right there. Slash users for noobs, man. Shorten the URL. <laughs> Alright, Kyle, you got this? Alright, I'm back. Alright. Um <sighs> So do you see that number at the bottom? I just right click that and call. How do I add a phone number to the Skype? Do you see the Skype chat? Um, yes, I'm looking at it. Do I need a comma in there, or is it just... Is Maybe that... you could drag it, like... Oh, oh here our... it is. I got it. 
Oh, it's going to ring. All right, this is the uh, flashlight, right? Yes. Future bike. Future bike. Hello? Hey, I'm calling about the uh, the ad you had for the flashlight. Yeah. Awesome. Is it one or two that you've got? Uh, what's that? Did you have one or did you have two? Um, I have two. Awesome. Are they are they like used or what's the deal with them? No, no, no. They're all they're all brand new in the package. Um, oh, okay. I had about like more than a dozen, and then I have like about four left. Okay. All right. Yeah. How much? How much is? It? How much are they both? Like how um, much would that be? They would be fifty for both. They're twenty five okay. each. Okay, that's sure. not a bad deal. Where, where are you located exactly? Like I didn't. Oh, I mean, not not exactly. You don't have to give me your address, but like basically. Uh, oh, I'm in North Hollywood. Okay, well, you, you you're not from. You'd be picking out from my address anyway. So. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm not too far away then. Um, let me ask you this. This is kind of a weird request. You said uh-huh. that they're they're new and unused and everything. How much would I have uh-huh. to pay to get them used? Um, I don't have any used ones. I know you don't. That's why I, I would be willing to pay more if you would use them. Oh uh, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not using them. Why not? Like, so, I mean, is there something wrong with them? Are they dangerous or something? No, no, no. They're they're all fine. Well, I mean, oh, I mean, but, uh, how can you sell something that you're not willing to u- use yourself? I mean, what's that? I mean, how could you sell something that you know you're not willing to use yourself? Um, uh, I don't need to use them, so. Well, I mean, I don't either. I just think you know I'd like to have one that maybe you had used. Like that's that's uh-huh. my goal. like. How much money would it take to get this done? Like, would five hundred dollars do it? No, nah, man. I mean, we don't have to like meet face to face or anything. I, here's here's what you do: grab that thing, crank one out, put it in a Ziploc bag, make sure it's sealed tightly, and you know, I'll give you the address. I'll send you five hundred cash. Just send it to me, no questions asked. Just make sure you don't send it on a Monday, because then my mom will find it and she'll freak out. Yeah, I can have a friend use it. All right, all right. <laughs> Could you, all right, one thing though, this this is kind of weird. Could you in could you put a picture of him? Maybe you could blur out his face, like his eyes or something, like in the package, so I could like look at him while I was using it. <laughs> I'm yeah, not I gay could do or that for you. Yeah, I'm not gay or anything. Yeah, yeah, I could do that for you. That would be awesome. Let me. Um, how can I pay you? How how would you like me to pay you? Uh, cash. Okay. So you'd like you want me to do you want me to mail it in or you want me to come in and pick the thing up? Uh, you can come pick it up if you want. All right, all right. Um, how soon can you make this happen? Uh, tomorrow. Okay, so if I come in like tomorrow, like say five p.m., you can have one of those things zip locked up, you know, yep. nice yep, and ready wet, to ready to go for me to pick up. Awesome. All yep. right, I'll be there tomorrow. Yep. I'm uh, okay. I'm about five five foot four. Uh, I'm white, dark hair. Uh, kind of balling on top, but uh, I'll be wearing the uh, the Star Wars shirt. I'll see you tomorrow. Sounds good. All right, later, man. Lay me. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> the stream was loving it. That was perfect. Um, so they told me that my mute didn't work. I'm going to test it now. Oh, I didn't Can hear you. guys you. hear me? I didn't hear, I didn't hear you. me either. Do you yeah, hear me? Good. You hear me now? Can you hear me? Am I saying anything? I can't believe you went for that shit. That's fucked up. Say I'm a panda if you can hear me. <laughs> oh, yeah, man, my I mute was definitely cut working. That section out. I just said like, like 15 different up. things. No one heard a thing. Yeah. What? Oh, I know why. What's going on? You know what? So, um, what I did is I muted myself on the Skype call. Yep. So the um, uh, they can hear me. It's the way that I'm streaming. So the stream can hear me, but the uh, Skype call can't. So that's yeah. what's going on. All right, but uh, why are they saying I'm a panda? What, what is, that's what he said. While I was muted, I said, if you can hear me, say I'm a panda. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you guys are totally clueless to the to that, yet in the stream, um, it's the way that the virtual audio cables are set up. So uh, That's hilarious. <laughs> I didn't think anyone heard that. But, uh, but yeah. So, um, well, that worked out pretty well. Do you, do you want to do one more? <laughs> you know, we got to uh, we got to cut that one out and just like use that as like a painkiller ready promo. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good one. Like he was, uh, and, and like I kept pushing it. I was like, you know, 
Uh, could you put a picture of him? You can blur his eyes out, whatever. I just want to be able to, you know, I want to look at it while I'm using it. <laughs> so he's like, yeah, all right, whatever. Whatever you need, man. <laughs> yeah, he was down, man. That wasn't a problem at all. Um, yeah, I, I, I want to, I'm, I'm kind of into the rats here. Can you do I anything with? All right, let me, ru- let me run over here and kill this beetle that has entered my home without permission. <laughs> And uh, oh. I'll be right back. Like, he's like 15 feet away, and he's been looking at me. He's been giving me the mean eye. One mm, sec. Can't put up with that. Can't let somebody mosey on in on your personal space. Gotta bust a cap. Oh, wait, there's another guy selling adult DVDs from North Hollywood. I hope it's not the same guy. Oh, yeah, so I checked tough. the phone numbers. They're different. <laughs> Dude, if he could somehow like offer to negotiate a trade for some flashlights, that would be, <laughs> be badass. It'd be nice if you had the, had the, uh, the other guy's address and then work it out between those two. And then they meet <laughs> each other and actually trade the flashlights for DVDs. Uh I'm just wondering, is there going to be like a uh, a massively used fleshlight in a Ziploc <clears throat> bag tomorrow waiting for $500? <laughs> yeah, but I didn't even think about that. That's fucked up. That fucking Dude, fuck, Kyle. got away. Yeah. Pay- Paintball Kitty came up pretty big with one. Let me show you this guy. Oh my. So there's a link in the uh, in the Skype that Kyle can see. Kyle, do you have it loaded? Um, One second, one second. I want to give it to you before I just put it in the stream. <laughs> oh, he's got good ones. I know, dude. That was quite the year, wasn't it? Pam Anderson was in it. Jenny McCarthy, McCarthy was in Jenny it. Thurman was in Playboy. Dude, this is some. Uh, Jenny McCarthy was in it twice. Twice. And Pam Anderson and Uma Thurman. How much? Like I, they're twenty. Bu- I want them. Like, like fuck messing with this guy. I want them. <laughs> you can be the second caller. Dude, I'm not even kidding. I want these. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't want to. No, nah, let's not prank phone call it. I'm gonna get these. <laughs> like I'm oh, not like a weird. I'm gonna frame these things. Like it's Pam at it's Pam Anderson. Um, yeah, Pam Anderson, Jenny McCarthy twice, and Uma Thurman. I'm a big Uma Thurman fan. I want these. Twenty dollars. <laughs> it's basically it's twenty dollars for the entire year, and they mm-hmm. look like they're in really good condition. Dude, they were probably seven bucks new. Yeah, I know, right? Like I'm just gonna frame them, stick them on a wall. Kyle, no one's buying that shit. We know what you're gonna do with them. I'm gonna frame them. Weird. Mm mm. Hey, Gators bitches use Jimmy hats. What next, bitch? You gonna read the articles? Gonna be using Jimmy's. You're gonna be like, this was quite the year. They had an argue. They had articles on uh, humidifiers and uh, (laughs) traveling in first class and uh, the internet. This brand new thing. I'm gonna. I'm gonna buy them for the articles. Bullshit, Kyle. (laughs) Fap fap fap. Gators, j- <laughs> Gators bitches better be using Jimmy. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> all right, so you don't want to uh, prank call this guy? No, because I'm going to buy those. Like, I'm not even joking. I'm, I'm <laughs> seriously going to buy those. Twenty. It seems like they're worth it. Like, like I mean, I would think like when Pam Anderson like finally dies of whatever, like that that's going to be worth something. Syphilis. Sure. <laughs> all right. Do you want to call this guy with the adult DVDs? Where's the rat guy? The rat guy is kind of interesting. Yeah, the only trouble is he's in Boston. <sighs> well, let's wake that motherfucker up. On we go. All right, I'm uh, just take a second to set up some calls. Run through it to me. Run, run through it one more time. <laughs> oh, let me link it for you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just a second. After you, um, after you have it in your browser, I can give it to the stream. I've got it. Man, Kitty has a gift for this. He's got eight fucking rats, man. I don't know what the... He has ten is. rats. Oh, well, obviously you want to buy them for your snake and for your um, gerbil adventures. Well, I mean, I was going to tell him how I wanted to... I don't want to spoil it, but, like... Here, let me send you a link of, like, what <laughs> I'm going to... do Walks Rhino, where you, like, a stick the gerbil up your butt to get high? Nah, man, and they don't do that to get high, either. <laughs> All right, here's... Here's <laughs> here's, uh, here's what I'm going to mention to him. I just linked you to 
I don't know anything oh, about Oh, Willard! This. Oh, shit! Oh, nice job, Wings. See, this is why you don't tell Wings things. <laughs> yeah, Wings is like, the worst secret keeper in the like, history. I, like, I imagine being like, <laughs> being like, guys, I got some bad news. And like, I send you guys both a link of like an HIV test. And Wings is like, you got AIDS! <laughs> like, that's, totally, that's totally what he did. <laughs> so bad at this. <laughs> Those guys didn't even know what I was talking about. Come on now. They know exactly what you're talking. <laughs> what, what what did I even say, Stream? What did I say? Stream, what is Wings what did Wings give away? It takes seven seconds for him to get it. Willard. Yep, it's in there. Willard, 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 Willard. There's a lot of I don't know's, but mostly Willards. Alright, what does Willard mean? Alright. If you know right. who Willard is and what Willard's about or like in ten words, what's what's the deal with Willard? These kids are way too young to know what Willard is. Willard came out when we were like, it's a remake of a movie from the sixties. Yeah, but I'm, I mean the new one. <laughs> it's a movie about a guy who's obsessed with rats. It means Kyle has AIDS. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Kyle. <laughs> I always um, heard that Kyle doesn't like pots. Fuck pots, man. Fuck pots. Um, are you ready to call this guy? Yeah, I don't even know what I'm going to no, say. I would so pot. do the fucks pot video if I wasn't scared of like breaking my floor. <laughs> yeah. I was a little worried he was going to crack my tile. You down? Uh, yeah. Should... All right. It's really <gasps> Please leave your message for oh. five zero eight three seven five eight eight four Russian, seven. Russian. Record your message after the tone. To send a numeric page, press five. When you are finished recording, Russian, hang Russian up. Accent. Or for delivery options, Help. press pound. Hey, I was calling about the ad you had. Uh, I saw that you had eight. I believe it's eight rats. And uh, and yeah, I need those. We uh we own a large uh, boa constrictor, and keeping that thing fed is a nightmare. So I don't know if those were like pet rats or like you know, it's sentimental value. But Big Billy is hungry as fuck. I've been feeding him just whatever I can get my hands on. Like you know, I got the neighborhood. I'm I'm not gonna lie. I got the neighbor's cat the other day, Mister <laughs> Mister Whiskers, and I I fed him to him. Like like he's in there hissing and stuff. If you don't feed him, he could break out of the cage. You know, it's one of those deals where, like, you know, the animal's powerful enough to get out of its cage, but he doesn't know it. But you starve them long enough, and they'll come right out. You see it all the time. But, uh, so it's pretty much either, you know, me or Mr. Whiskers, and I made a decision. <laughs> Mr. Whiskers had to go, so. If I could get a hold of those rats, it would help a lot. So, um, my, my phone number is 706-356-8855. So, uh, call me back. I need those rats as soon as possible. Like, I'm looking at him over in his tank right now. He's giving me the mean eye. All right, you know what I mean? Like, he's looking at me like I could wrap you up, and it would take eight months to digest your ass, and it'd be tasty. So uh, give me a call back. Thanks. <laughs> that was awesome. I liked it. I liked it. Um, all right. Do you want to do one more or wrap up the podcast? I will, I'll do one more. All right. Well, you're in luck because um, Paintball Kitty has a gift for this stuff. I will give you the link first, and then let I'll, me know when you have it, and I will share it with the stream. And guys, oh. if your uh, area code happens to be 706, then you're right near me, motherfuckers. That's my area code. <laughs> yeah. I'll see you guys over in Athens next week. What are you doing in Athens? Kyle, Nothing. did you get the link yet? Well, the sex wing a while back. It would be fun. However, we never get to use it. It's just been sitting around. <laughs> All right, let's do this shit. <laughs> All right. Uh, did I put the number in yet? No. So let me get this. Gators bitches better be using Jimmy's. It'll ring soon. Box belonging to two seven zero. Six one nine two three four five is full and cannot accept new messages at this time. To leave a callback number, press five. Damn. Or please play again later. You can't even do anything. Like their mailbox is full. These people are dead. 
they were, they were messing around on that swing and hung themselves or something. <laughs> Odd. All right. So, shucks, I hate to leave on a note like that. How about we Sad call a prostitute? Hmm. We could call a random number. I like those. All right. I prosti will... Prostitutes are going to be hard to fuck with because I, you know somebody's paid to shit on her before. Like you're going to have a hard time. It's going to be you're going to have a hard time shaking up, shaking somebody like that up. Um, random number. So I'm thinking you want to call GameStop and try to get Modern Warfare Three and not take no for an answer. Yes, yes, I do. <laughs> All right, let's work on that. I, I still believe I know. Why don't we just call somebody from the stream? You know what? Do you want to do that? Yeah. All right, stream. Here's a guy who put his number in there. God, it's I, moving so fast. God, I, I missed it. Chicks. Whoever was 666. I, oh, my God, there's so many numbers here. Guys, tweet your number to Woody. Yeah. Oh, that's that's even less safe than putting it in the stream. But if well, someone tweets it to me, I'll use that. At least it won't scroll by before I can copy paste it. Ooh, I got a guy. I got a guy. We'll call this guy. Mm -hmm. It is bitches better be using Jimmy's. Who All did right. that? Here we is. We call. We called a phone number. Here we are. I should say. Here we is. God. Here we is, player. That's what it do. Hey, I'm not here right now. Text me or. You fucked the kid, bro? Oh, Holy yeah. smokes. This guy didn't pick up his phone? Oh, my gosh. Drop he, him. <laughs> he was young, too. I, I, bet he, I bet he's bummed he missed his chance. Grab somebody else. I thought we should have left him a voicemail. Oh. Somebody goes, like, you can see the, the cruelty of teenagers on the internet. Somebody goes, what a faggot. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like come on, dude. All right. I got another one. We're just we're just throwing the fishing rod out there, huh? You're <laughs> <laughs> just calling random numbers, son. <laughs> You're just calling subs. Socrates wants to be called. I got his number right. Oh, it's not my phone. Yeah, it's called Socrates. Did we have Socrates on here one time? Yeah. Well, we could just add him to the call on Skype. That'd work. <laughs> yeah, we could do that. Okay, now he doesn't want to get called. Fine, suck. Bitch out. I see how it is. Is this guy even picking his phone up? Hello? Hello? Hey, what's going on, buddy? Hey. What's up? Did you put your phone number on Painkiller already? Yeah. You win, baby. Can Shit. we talk to your mom? No. So you put your phone number out here. What do you want to talk about? This is your time. You have exactly five minutes. What do you yeah. want to Whoa, talk about? Five minutes? What? You know what? Here's a question. I've got it. I've got a topic for you. If you had 60 seconds in which the entire world was watching you, what would you do? What would you do with your 60 Holy seconds? Shit. I don't know. No, no. Think about it. Come up with something. Here it is. <laughs> Shine, baby. Shine. What would you do with your 60 seconds? The whole world is looking. May have been a bad idea. <laughs> I'm looking at the stream. <laughs> Yeah, we're not watching the stream. You're part, you're part of the entertainment now. Come, Come on, buddy. baby. You're on the show now. People say, why don't you call us? How come you don't have you know small channels? How come Let's represent the little man. Show us your entertainment value. Bring it. You have 60 seconds. The whole world is watching. What are you going to do? Come up with something good or I tweet your phone number. <laughs> the clock is ticking you, Junior. What, what you don't want to do is clam up and be nervous and start forgetting what you're thinking about I and then th wondering... Are you still here? Yeah. All right. You have 60 seconds. You can jump off a building. You can you can show off your, your best physical attributes. You can sing a song. You can promote a charity. <laughs> sing Rebecca Black. <laughs> All right. There it is. So do it. The world it. is watching. Let's hear it. Friday, baby. Bring it. <laughs> I was just kidding. You sing oh for me God. and you sing good <laughs> right now. Oh, I scared them all. All right. all right. That was really weird. All right. Oh, man. I was just looking up the lyrics. I was about to do it with him. Yeah, we probably... <laughs> remember man. from Superbad? He's like, you sing. You sing good. <laughs> no, we should probably... <laughs>
I think it's still there. I think I think we should put a number and what you want to talk about next time. Yeah, all right. Let's let's call at least one more before we wrap up. Um, you got a, a topic that you're willing to talk about. Yeah, Nobody put a phone number here. and a quick um uh you know uh, sell yourself real quick. Should we tweet his phone number out now? No, no. Oh, the poor guy. He's I just feel really not... bad, man. I just did. <laughs> you did not. Really, not really. <laughs> we fucked up. Well, I've never seen a stream go so fast. It switched into followers only mode. <laughs> <laughs> like there's been slow mode, but now you can only type if you follow my channel. Wow. I, th- I actually think we should make it like that all the time. Oh, now nope. now it's rolling. So, oh, oh I see, I see punch something there. I saw the guy say that he would fellatiate Kyle. <laughs> I think it's fillet. Is it fillet? Fillet, yeah, fillet. I think that you're right. So he wants to call. Damn it, where's this guy? Oh, call this Waka Flocka kid with the dating problems. Shucks, I... Damn it, the, some of the, I can't even copy-paste the streams moving so quickly. Sorry, people who are listening to this on yeah, iTunes. Yeah, you should, you should definitely be tweeting. So in other news, does anybody want to come help me move some furniture tomorrow? <laughs> I, I have one. You know, I might be down for that because I'm bored as fuck. <laughs> you haven't seen my furniture. You got to go up a flight of stairs with a huge chest of drawers. Yeah, and I got, like I got a, a checkbook. The safe. <laughs> hey, what's up, man? This painkiller Hello already. There. Hey, you have an ex-girlfriend uh, story? Um, yes, I do. The, oh, wow, I am totally impressed and. Very satisfied with the reply. Thank you. Uh, and I found I sound like an idiot right now, but regardless, how is everybody doing tonight on Painkiller already? Just fine. We want to hear a girlfriend story, though. Okay, so sophomore year, I'm, I'm a junior, right? And I'm, I'm a small commentator, so hopefully I'll be able to get this out in perspective. Um, a sophomore year comes around, and I am High school pretty college. much in this... <laughs> I'm a sophomore, so it's kind of like this young age, and I'm like not doing, knowing what I'm doing, and I'm kind of getting desperate, I guess. And I pretty much end up dating this girl that I was friends with. Now, this girl is kind of good looking, but she's uh, okay and kind of annoying, and she ended up wanting to get physical pretty quickly. Now, when I That's mean a physical, good woman I don't right mean there. like. <laughs> I guess you could say that, mm-hmm. but for me, I was thinking about what I might regret later on in life, so I ended up breaking it off with her after she came back from a vacation after spring break, and that was about three months after the relationship, and we were about to have sex that next day. Dude, next so time you're in, in a situation mind, like this, ask yourself, what would Dan it. do? What would Dan do? And <laughs> I thought about that. <laughs> he would Dan, he would tap Dan it and then date someone idol. else tomorrow. Yeah, go on. <laughs> <laughs> um. So that ends, and she ends up like telling her friends about me, and I'm like, "Hey, this is not cool. I'm I feel like I'm being stabbed in the back." And all of a sudden, I find all my friends looking against me, and. It just kind of meant, it it looked like everybody was looking down at me and saying, wow, what a horrible person you were to break up with this girl. And to be honest, she was not that great looking. I mean, she was kind of hot, but kind of not. It's okay, baby. I've dated the entire (laughs) spectrum of looks. Hey, let me me ask you this. What kind of person do you consider yourself? Wings. Um... I'm, I'm slightly athletic. I no. I'm, I'm, what kind of person do you consider yourself? Are you sentimental? My, quit, quit, quit justifying on looks. You're actually looking at things in a shallow perspective. What kind of person I are you? Look, are you the kind of person that would feel bad if you slept with a girl just to leave her, or are you the kind of person that would just be so shallow and worry only about looks and just you know hit it and then tell the bitch that her pussy is slack? Which one of those are you? Um. Honestly, I would. 
I put people before myself usually, and I would probably feel bad about it. Therefore, right. that's why I broke up with her. I had to and think you... about that, and I talked a bunch, of, bunch of, uh, I talked to a bunch of people about it beforehand, and they were all saying, "Yeah, you probably made the right decision." And those stupid people. Like there's one other guy. I have another story. I have a couple stories. I was uh, really let's, hoping let's, let's to get go and, let's go and This is amazing, guys. Let's go ahead and harp on this a little bit longer. Okay, you said you, she told her girlfriends about you breaking up with her before you had sex. Was it in a negative light or a positive light? Um, well, I said, I said that we were getting, that we were moving too fast. And basically she said, oh, no, well, moving she said too fast. It. Are you sure you're What's the up? guy? Did she, did she talk to you like, you know, well, this guy's a faggot. He didn't want to fuck this. Or did she go, you know, at least he did, at least he broke it off before it got too far. Which no, one of those did she no. respond to? The first one. The first one, no. definitely. She, she so she thought she was just a faggot. She was spreading rumors. In my Being entire dating bitch. career, I've never met a girl that moved too fast. Now, let, let me let me say this. Here's what you should do with she that scenario. Your friend could not be too fast. Like, <laughs> like it, really, if she was down like DTF in 15 minutes back in my dating days, that would have been an appropriate speed. And she sounds slower than that. <laughs> I mean, by right. the time the fourth date rolls around, if they ain't putting out, it's time to dump them. <laughs> But uh, here's well, so, so well, the scenario she, you're in is your friends are looking down on you because you didn't tap it. She's looking down on you because you didn't tap it. The only way you you could justify they do anything about this to save face is to make yourself as the white knight. Like, look here, I didn't want to hurt you. You know, why would I take that next step if I didn't really really want a relationship with you or anything like that? You want to win the covenant of her friends. She sees this and you do it in front of her friends. You might be right back in the ballpark. You might be, you know, round at second base next week with one of her better looking friends. Yeah, yeah I think dude, in that right. perspective. Yeah, the way I'm looking back in this, I mean, with the benefit of hindsight, I think the kind thing to do in this situation was to tap it, right? I mean, I think you hurt some feelings in there by not tapping it. And uh, <laughs> next time this comes up, you got to hit that. Now, oh, and let me also that, tell you something else. Your league, though, Woody. I'm not on your. Le- I can't. I'm not on your level, though. No, you are on my level. You you've got a girl that, that, that that's DTF. You're on level, baby. You're on point. You gotta. Ah. <laughs> you gotta get the finger in there. That's what you gotta do. And you gotta quit blowing that ganja, dude. That's just gonna fuck your brains up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. We're gonna call someone else. Thanks for the story. Uh, would you mind um, giving me a, a quick shout out? I mean, nothing huge or anything. Go ahead. Just be wanted quick. to let people know that are listening to me that they know who I am. Um, my on my YouTube is bleed red and white. I do do commentaries, and I I, I honestly think I'm been getting positive feedback mostly. So if you'd be willing to check me out, I'd be really thankful. And again, guys, it's it's been an honor talking to you guys. I really appreciate Very good, it. Man. Thanks All for right, coming dad, on. Dads and red and white. are happy that you came on because they know their daughters are safe. <laughs> yes, they do. Yeah. yeah, I would be happy you could to date my daughter, and daughter. she's like eleven. Yeah, that wasn't the whole story, <laughs> and I don't need to tell it. But I mean, if you guys need to move on, I understand. It's good, man. Yep. Have, have Catch you later, day. buddy. Oh, that's funny. I like as a homosexual. <laughs> not, that anything, right. not that there's anything wrong with that. Oh, that is such a good idea. We should call Sony about the PlayStation Network. I don't think they want any bullshit right now. They've got like investigative teams out searching for people. Let's leave them alone. Uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe we should. Uh... No, but all right. Look, there's no situation in which the girl is moving too fast. Like, literally, let me ask you this question: If an attractive female literally walked up to single Woody and said, "Hey, let's get, let's go, right, let's get you a know, room she right now," she wouldn't have to be that attractive, you know? Yeah. Can we? Like, she- well, Can we you know, redefine as long this? As she got tits like, and all. Let's you say know, a disease-free woman no, walked you know, up to single Woody. <laughs> I'm like, disease-free, really? <laughs> That's too good to be true. <laughs> you say we're a fucking a porta potty? <laughs> serious? All right. <laughs> yeah, dude. I I I may have saw a video with a girl who um she, she was having sex. And apparently, she was like this respectable girl, debutante type thing, and um. It was on a public bathroom, and there was urine on the floor, and she was still DTF. And everybody was like, oh, my God, you know, can you believe this woman? And I was like, you know, she's kind of cool. <laughs> Again, I'm going in. All right. There's another guy. He works at Ubisoft.
Oh, uh, is this painkiller already? This is painkiller already. What's going on, man? What's up, dude? It's Fuzzy Otter Balls here. Do you really work at Ubisoft? I do. Ah. What do you do there? I am a strategic analytics manager. A strategic? Used to be a game producer. What yeah, is a strategic? Yeah, a of bullshit. Is that what like you- a big title <laughs> for changing the trash? No, the strategic analytics advisor. What do you do? You try to uh, so find you, market opportunities? You know, uh, you ever play Facebook games? No. No? no I'm, your I'm wife a boy. plays Facebook games, your mother, something like that. I, that's I, our, that, I know that's our that core audience. I've been audience. invited to them a lot. Yeah. So, so, so anyway, every time you, you click on that, we, we track what you can do, basically. Uh-huh. And, and you, what, what do you do with the analysis? Try to figure we out where to invest in games, to what's hot. You pay us money. Ah. So how's that work? How do you monetize the Facebook games? God, there's so many different ways. It's mainly microtransactions. We basically create a fake market for, for virtual items and mm-hmm. uh, make you think it's valuable and you want to buy it. Uh, has, has Ubisoft, I mean, I was looking at the website. There are some Xbox 360 games that they've worked on. Oh, yeah. They make Assassin's Creed. Right, right. That's that's a big one. Hey, so do you work with the programmers at all? Uh, so, when I was a producer, yeah. What does so it you take to be a programmer? Like, it, how does a lot of guys tell me they want to make games? You know, and they say, you know, "What do I do? What what should my major be? What should?" They, do you have any insight into that? Like, what does the typical resume look like of a guy who's making games? Oof. So you're talking about programming, designing, you know, artists, whole bunch of things. Right, so that's that's a good point too, right? You know, the programmers are not the only people who make these games. There's artists, there's story guys, there's there's whatever. Like, what does it take to get into producing games? Making producing, games. so that's, well, that's product management. All right, well, fuck, I, would you just answer the fucking question? What does it take to I, work I on a goddamn game? <laughs> right. So, no matter what you do, what you want to do, there is a place in gaming uh, that you can apply that skill. Pretty much anything you want to do, you can do it in gaming. You just have to position yourself well and be willing to basically eat shit for a couple of years and work at a shitty company before you get your shot at a big company like Ubisoft. Okay. So, hmm, you'd start out at a smaller gaming company and work your way up to, like, a big-time type deal? Sounds like bad That's totally how it works, yeah. And what do their resumes yeah. look like? You know, Are they mostly comp sci majors on the computer side? There's a game development major now. Do you guys look for that in particular? Do you know? Well, he, here's the deal for programming. Um, mm-hmm. It's basically a commodity uh, because it, there's a certain amount of work that needs to be done. They pretty much know how to do it. It just takes time, it takes testing, and you got to make sure you do it right. Uh, so they look at for people who have experience in the industry. And when I tell you, when I explain like a game design concept and I want it done, you have to know what, what that is before you can go and implement it. So that's what I look for people with experience. And it's, it's sort of that weird catch-22, like you can't get experience unless you already have experience, mm-hmm. but you can't get experience unless you get it. <laughs> so you basically, it really helps to network, know people, uh, and just try to get in, keep applying. So what does it take to, um, to be one of the art guys? I mean, do they typically have some sort of art education or just a portfolio? Like, how do you get into it like that? Yeah, it'll be portfolio. Uh, they'll look at your stuff and... If you, their art fits with the creative vision of the game, uh, as dictated by the art director, they will uh, they'll call you in and sort of see whether you can produce art consistently and in quality and on time. Hmm. Now, how about, we, how about we actually go for the job that's actually what people want to do? Quality assurance tester. People want that? QA testing. Nobody no. wants that. Dude, that is so <laughs> bad. It sounds like fun. It sounds like you're just going to play games like, like you do <laughs> you know, for a living. Right. In reality, they're like, all right, you know, we want 250 power cycles of an Xbox. We want, you know, you to do this very particular thing. It, they suck the fun out of video games and make you repeat it again and again. It's dreadful, right? Right. So if you're working on like a big time game, you know, maybe okay because you get to see it before everyone, but you will not be working on that. You'll be working on fucking Barbie Horse Adventures for three months every single day, like 10 hours a day, and it won't even be play the game. It'll be play the game to a certain point and then turn off the power to see whether or not it's saved properly. And then you got to do that for, like, the entire game. And you will want to hang your... I'm sorry. You will want to quit your job, like, by the end of the day. Guaranteed. Unless, unless you, like, 
really, really like testing and really like quality assurance, you're going to want to not want to do it. All anymore. right. Well, let me ask you this question. What does a stud like me got to do to get to get to be the helm of a major first person shooter? Oh my god. A helm of a major person shooter. You know, if I knew that, I, I would be there. I'd be there myself. Actually, you know but, what? Uh, I am mildly curious about this. So, hypothetically, let's say that someone had a you know fairly successful YouTube channel. What kind of position in a gaming company do you think that would open for them? Any? Community manager, marketing, uh, PR coordinator, all those things. Uh, even production. If you've got like a lot of PM experience, you can get in as an AP. So that's what I did. I was an investment banker before. I have no like gaming experience before this, and. Uh, yeah, but you, you just apply. You take a shot. Sometimes they they like what they see. If you got a good pedigree, if they if they recognize your name, you're pretty much them, dude. All right, man. Hey, thanks for coming on, Fuzzy Outer Balls. Yeah, Check out our YouTube me. channel. See, I'm I'm kind of like doing. I want to do like the Jack Roush thing. I just want to go in there and use my name and like sign a couple engines. That's what I want to do. <laughs> but like, damn, this game's Wings of Redemption approved. <sighs> All right, so that was Painkiller already, episode 50. Uh, thanks for coming, guys. Here's shit.